That being said, if uh, everybody is willing, as as Ray kind of stepped aside, but she said it's ready to go, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Yeah. And... Are you peeing on my feet? Oh boy. What? Oh no. <laughs> I'm. That... Well. Oops. Uh... <laughs> go on. <laughs> Bro, moment. <laughs> Bro, moment. Uh, on that note, don't you hate when you hear that? <laughs> And welcome, everybody, to Not One Fun. <laughs> I hope everybody had a great week. I know I did. Uh, we have uh, a bit of a, a, a puppy issue. <laughs> and yeah. It seems that Seth's puppy has uh, urinated on his feet right before starting. So, yeah, so we got a little bit of time to talk about, you know, all the things we need to talk about before we get started. Uh, first off, I want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, I appreciate everyone who is, uh, like always chilling and ready to go, like right around the time we start. So thank you very much. Uh, secondly, I'd like to go ahead and talk about, uh, some stuff we got in the mix. Uh, first off, of course, being the fact that we are always, of course, uh, wonderfully, uh, supported by our friends over at Die Hard Dice. So if you would like to, you can go ahead and go over to Die Hard Dice and use the code NAT1 to save yourself 10% off any of your purchases on the website, uh, including some of the new dice that just came out recently, uh, which are pretty fucking amazing, a new Draconic lines, lineup, um, and new Neon dice that were pretty badass that can, like, you know, shine and, uh, and be amazing in black light. So um, go check those out. You could also check out the uh, the the dice set that supports us directly, and I will find it here. I assume this is not it. This is it right here. Uh, yeah, you can find that on the website if you just type in Desert Melody. If you end up purchasing this dice set with uh, a bunch of other dice, you can support Nat One Fun uh, if you use that code Nat One when you check out. So um, much appreciated. The beautiful set, like I said before, it's a metal set with uh, really pretty purple inlay uh, with like sparkles and stuff like that. But uh, the best part, the main part about it is that it's an awesome like copper metal set um, on top of that. So pretty awesome. Um, on top of that, I would like to state that we uh, are also doing some dice giveaways uh, coming up. So next month we have uh, an awesome dice giveaway um, as well as some other stuff. So. Uh, Ray, do you want to go ahead and take it away real quick? So, November's dice set is going to be a metal dice set from D&D Dice called Murking. Um, it is prismatic, is in color, and it has scales. So, I got it because it looked like a dragon, but I mean, whatever. It can be a mermaid, too, I guess. <laughs> um, but, yes. That's uh, just FYI. Next month is going to be a metal set. And yeah. Maybe, maybe December too. Who knows? <laughs> All right. I know. So I know. I don't know why I'm <laughs> saying stuff like that. So there are plans to get some badass uh, dice sets here on die Hard, on, on die hard dice on that one fun. Uh, that you can always, you know, don't forget to be subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Um, you can always use your free subscription by using Twitch Prime if you haven't already for the month. Uh, and enter to win one of these badass sets every single month. Um, on top of that, go check us out on uh, on Twitter and or our Discord where we do some other stuff. So, um, as you can see below, there is a sub goal of 75. We are trying to reach 100 and uh, basically... To, uh, at 100, we will be running a one-shot, which my wife will be included in, and also you guys as, subs uh, as subscribers can be involved in. Uh, so, looking for uh, about 100 subs to do that, but mainly, I would like to point out the fact that Nat One Fun is trying to get to PAX Unplugged. And with your help, through donations and through support of the stream, be it, you know, gift subs or be it direct donations, uh, you can help get us there. Uh, we are trying to raise some money in order to get Nat One Fun to finally get out into the real world instead of, you know, being on the internet and be on the Twitterverse and stuff like that and kind of network and get our name out there so we can start getting some big names and, and guests and uh, all kinds of stuff on the show, which I would love to do. Um, so, yeah. So if you have uh, some money in your pockets that you uh, are just burning a hole in, with, uh, you can absolutely toss it our way. We will... Uh, be sure to make the stream as good as possible for uh, the best content we can possibly provide for you. Um, 
Let's see. Let's see. Voice Mod. We are also sponsored by Voice Mod. So if you would like to check out Voice Mod, you can uh, definitely do that by using our partner link um, and also uh, purchasing uh, the the full on version, basically that allows you to use all of the Voice Mod goodness. Um, meaning that you can. It's. I think you're only limited to a few free voices every. I want to say week. I can't remember because I haven't had the free version in a while. But basically, it, it's it's essentially allows you to uh, unlock all of the voices that it has, and it has an insane library of voices. Um, on top of that, you can uh, basically um, make your own. You know, there's tons of voices that you can uh, make alongside of that. Um, and I will be using today, I will be using a voice that I created solely by myself by using the program. So you can check that out. Ooh. And it, it's fucking awesome. Uh, so check this out. Yes. I will give you the link here. Um, and I will post it in chat. And check it out there. Uh, like I said, if you purchase the, the license through that or whatever, it also goes to support the, uh, the old Nat One Fun. So appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, are, are you good to go, um, Seth? I, I know it was a bit of an issue. I don't know if it went, like, are you good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I've got a towel down there. Just, yeah, it's good. All right. Well, sorry that happened. Puppies are unpredictable and crazy, so. <laughs> I love him to death, but yeah, I'm good to go. Go on. Okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, thank you all again very much for, uh, you know, hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and as Yotain said, there is also a soundboard, sound effects, and stuff like that. You can use stuff like this. Hey! You know, just randomly if you wanted to. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff um, that are that's included in voice mod that I didn't even explain. Uh, go check it out yourself. Like I said, it's free. You could always just download it and check it out. And if you wanted to uh, support us and them, you can purchase through the link. So thank you very much for listening to our spiel. I would like to say, don't forget to catch us soon uh, with more details for the Running Fey Wild campaign. We have selected our group of individuals that are going to be joining us, which are some pretty fucking awesome people, mind you. Uh, definitely go check out our Discord, which uh, I'd spent some time kind of introducing each one of these people. And um, I will get into further details with an, a... a um, a full introduction probably later on coming in the next couple months. Um, you can, you can expect to see the campaign starting out around the beginning of next year. So keep an eye out at the beginning of July or January, and we will uh, probably be getting started with that epic Feywild campaign. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Enough, enough with the introductions. I need to be able to take off and go trick-or-treating with the kids later on, so we're going to go ahead and try and get this episode started and uh, and see what happens. So without further ado, unless you guys have anything, happy Halloween to everybody. And let's go happy ahead and Happy Halloween. that <laughs> intro. Roll it! And last we left off, ladies and gentlemen, after their horrifying encounter with a large group of corrupted Chewinga, 
who when attacked grotesquely mutated into the thing-like monstrosities. Winter's End took to the skies once more in search of Oriole's secret island fortress. After several hours of flying over water, the team discovers a wall of icy fog that seemed to cover a large area over the sea of moving ice. Believing this to be the location of the hidden island, they swoop down and enter the mist. Bearing the coldest temperatures they've ever encountered, they emerge, landing on the outskirts of the island, carved, excuse me, landing on the outskirts of the island, just as the start uh, of an overwhelming sight. A huge mountain of ice reaching towards the sky, carved of pure ice and stone to resemble a skull wearing a crown. Before setting off into the island, they're confronted by a quirky ice method named Sopo who guides the team to the last location of Veleni's former arcane colleague. Upon arrival, they discover the frozen corpse of the mage holding a darkened purplish-black orb. Upon attempting to pry the orb from the hand, the ghost of the wizard apparated in front of the team, sending many of them into a frightful stance and even aging poor Percy by many years instantly. The team makes a difficult decision on whether to destroy the ghost or kill Veleni, ultimately deciding on the former. After retrieving Professor Scant, with Winter's End, climb the ominous giant made staircase to the entrance of the mountain fortress, and once roaming the halls, finds themselves face to face with a quite old and blind frost giant, who apparently was finally granted the warrior's death it so seek. And that's where we pick up today in the depths of Grimnskada. There we go. All right. So, welcome everybody to today's episode of Winter's End. So, as I had said before, you guys are currently in the middle of this uh, icy room, this, this cavern, uh, this you know, this sculpted uh, cavernous entrance into the mountain. Uh, you had just defeated a large um, giant uh, of sorts, and I will take us over to Tailspire. Um, and if you don't know already, Tailspire is a wonderful TTRPG app that you can, or app, uh, program that you can use on Steam that is basically a digital tabletop. Uh, and you can build your worlds and stuff like that. Uh, it is currently in beta, so please uh, allow that uh, to seep into your knowledge as we might encounter a few things that don't look exactly uh, the best they possibly could. It is still in beta, but it is amazing for what it is, and we shall carry on. So let's go over to Tailspire. Now, it's going to look weird for a second because I need to activate my screen share. For the team. And there we go. And we're good. Uh, team, uh, can you confirm and let me know that you can see it? Yes. Okay. We can see it. Okay. Remember, there are people watching in audio only, so feel free to, to say stuff instead of just visually. Um, yes, Daniel. I, I can see it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. So we're going to get some sound <laughs> effects going. <clears throat> and some music now the last thing that we left off uh, with is um, the uh, the image of this giant finally falling to the ground dead um, <clears throat> with its back blasted out through a blast of energy um, it lays dead on the ground leaving grimly uh, wounded very harshly um, and Olanu is currently still enlarged uh, as the spell takes hold through Kinrava's uh, usage. Um, currently, Olanu stands <laughs> a, like a towering, like seven or eight foot above Grimly. Yeah, it doubles that size, so like 14 feet. <laughs> yeah. She's 14 feet tall. Yeah. Grimly is, is a good five foot tall, so. How do you guys want to do this? You guys are obviously uh, capable of doing whatever you'd like now. Uh, can we hear an explanation of what 
like if that treasure is really in that corner that's yeah absolutely where I, I would run cool so yeah. let me yeah. fuck me no. <laughs> i healed you during the fight thank you fuck me there's treasure though all right <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me describe the room. It says uh, a withered old frost giant leaning against a heavy chair. Um, he looks around, or and it, as you destroy him or whatever and kill him, you look around, um, and you can see that uh, there is a small area at the back of the room, kind of where he kicked his chair out from under him and smashed it against the wall. Uh, you can see a pile of treasure um, that has essentially co been collected uh, from many of the adventurers that have uh, traversed the island. Ooh. Cool. Yes, I would like to go there, please. All right. And so... see what's in the pile. Leoden makes her way to the pile of treasure. I would also like to search the frost giant. Yeah. Yeah, Kinroth will also go over to the treasure pile as well. I'm going to go up to Grimly and pump a cure wounds into him. Thank you. I'll just give him a, a, a heavy pat on his shoulder. Good work. <sighs> you too. Kinrava's going to just snap her fingers and end the enlarged spell. All right. Alani so, seems slightly disappointed. Alani, not, <laughs> only, not only do you feel a slightly disappointed, but you also feel extremely like sluggish. And you're like, oh. Brad, you get, you get 10, Brad. 10? Nice. Yeah. Okay, you go over to the treasure, and you find a massive amount of treasure. You look, and this pile of gold, you spend a good ten minutes sorting through. You find about 1,350 gold pieces. Fuck. 4,000 Four hundred silver pieces and seven thousand eight hundred copper pieces. Yay! Cool, now, cool. amongst the treasure, you also find four gold rings, giant scale. So essentially, like dinner plates with the middle cut out. Um, each one of them. Probably worth around 150 gold piece a piece. Sorry, can you repeat what just happened? I just had a quick phone call. Yeah, no problem. Uh, 1350 gold pieces, 4,400 silver pieces, 7,800 copper pieces, four gold rings that were made for giants, each about 150 gold pieces. You see a giant sized shield made of white dragon scales. Oh? The shield is huge oh. is it magical though <laughs> <laughs> you see a two foot tall 50 pound chipped statuette statuette of something uh an individual looks to be like possible frost giant okay but it is made of ice that seemingly is not melting. Definitely not cursed. Definitely. The giant that got shrunk and then killed and then froze. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's about right. Sounds about right. Um, on top of that, you find uh, a weird ceramic uh, jar. I am going to... I'm going to use my... Order of Scribes feature to cast Detect Magic. Okay. You cast Detect Magic, and outside of the fact that you all gleam with uh, all your magical items that you currently possess, um, you can see that in the pile itself, um, the only magic, uh, or at least the only aura that you're getting that just kind of got pulled out from there, uh, is the weird ceramic jar. Of course. Because I want okay. to open it so bad. <laughs> um, could you all just let open. me examine the jar, please? That's actually magical. The rest of this isn't. I put the money, the gold rings, 
into the bag of holding. I look at Olanu and go, oh, can you use this with the dragon shield? <laughs> yeah, she like <laughs> is like having to like drag it out of the pile itself and just leans it up against the wall next to her and it just like <laughs> against the wall. Yep. Uh, it's literally mean... your entire height, Olanu. Jesus. Although we could oh. take the scales off there and I can reuse them for something else if you'd like. Sorry, let me mute my phone. Oh. I apologize. We didn't have time to search a ship. Don't think we have time to descale a shield. Well, then take the shield with us then. Uh, I can pick it really up. Really large and heavy, probably. You pulled an entire cart. We'll just strap it to your back. Okay. Why don't you ask her if she wants to do it? <laughs> do That's kind of rude to... to just tell her to do it. Do you want to carry the shield? No. I feel like it might slow her down, if anything. <clears throat> Can I examine the shield? Sure. Just kind of dragon. Why? Do we assume... Yeah, it's uh, white. white dragon scales. Uh, gigantic, like, white dragon scales. So, like, each scale is probably a little bit larger than your head. Does... Oh. Do the... Do the scales remind me of the a ancient dragon that ah. almost killed us? So, yeah. Uh, it would kind of look basically the same as the scales that you... Um, I mean, like, the same as in it is the same texture, it is the same make, but, uh, you Ooh. know, it is almost they, impossible it, to determine if it became it came from that particular dragon. Heard. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. That's a good question. Um, so, uh, you guys are kind of digging through uh, this treasure, um, and as you kind of are uh, <laughs> reaping your... your, your just rewards for, for killing this one giant. Um, a, and a, like an echoing voice begins to kind of emanate through the halls and the entirety of your location. Um, so you're like yeah. digging through coins and stuff like that. And all of a sudden you hear. You come here. Tomorrow I, I sought, 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 I just slowly turn towards the group. That wasn't in my head, was it? No. Oh, did I find anything on uh, the giant itself? On the what? The, the giant. giant itself, yeah. On the giant itself, no. Uh, it seems to be completely, uh, like, empty of anything outside of its, like, uh, cloth. Uh, loincloth that it was wearing and the gigantic axe that it wielded. Uh, hearing that voice, I'm just gonna run up to the door and sort of push my shoulder up against it and just peek outside the door and look down the hallway. Just basically just keeping an eye out for anything approaching possibly while we're in here. You look out the doorway, and uh, all you see are the uh, doors that you had previously saw uh, when you first entered the area. Um, you look down the hallway, and you see a, a closed pair of doors to your left, an opening further down the hallway to your left, and, of course, an opening downwards directly in front of you. Uh, and lastly, another door to your right. Sweet. So two closed doors and two open areas. Um, Grimly will cast Lay on Hands on himself real quick for another 20 HP. Okay. 20 no, HP, back to you. 
How are you looking? Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay. Um, temp HP is gone. Can pop an... Right. Uh, temp HP technically is not. It's still like pretty soon after she used the, uh, the spell. Okay. Okay. I can you pop another cure that. wounds into you, but it's my last spell slot. <laughs> uh, might as well save it. Okay. So. We can still take a short rest too if you guys want to heal up at all. I don't know if anybody's hurt. Um, what do you guys do? You all like to do. I'm actually not hurt at all, and I'm fairly okay on spells at least right now. Move forward for now. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to check the door across the way? I'll just spit a little bit more blood up and then nod at you and start walking out of the room. Okay. I will catch up with Grimly and put and give him another cure wound. You're going to give him oh. another cure wounds? Okay. You know, one of the tanks. I'd like him to be as healed as possible. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm actually going to do it at the second level because oh. I have more of those spell slots. Uh, Lanu will go over to help open the next door. Okay. Just Remember to pull. Everybody know. <laughs> Remember, it's a pull. I rolled almost as high as I possibly could. Good, good. What do you got? 19 points of healing. Nice. That's pretty awesome. Seven, seven and an eight. Let's go. Cool. Okay, I'm just, just about full. Past full with the temp HP. Let's go. Perfect. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, with that being said, uh, you guys... Uh, I'm sorry, Ken, did you do anything to identify that object? Are you casting identify, or are you... I don't think I right had now? time to, so I'm just packing it on my belt and then just following the others. I don't okay. think I had time. Yeah, no, no, no. It's Unless you guys take a short rest, then no. Not right now. No. Nah, we'll be... Fine. Okay. So Grimly and Olanu make their way across the hallway to the door there. Uh, each one of these doors are gigantic slabs of ice, basically, uh, with, um, like, all you can see on that ice are ice sculpted, um, like, handles. So uh, go ahead and give me strength checks. Uh, both of you go ahead and give me strength athletics checks to try and open this door. Easy. Easy peasy. 24. Let's... Woo! Nice. Nice. Uh, strength athletics would be a 17. Okay, not bad, not bad. Just Strong. like before, just like before, Grimly, you are pushing on the door, or pulling on it if you'd like, but you are pushing on the door and it's like barely moving until Olanu just like gives it her all and pushes like right above you and both of you, uh, combining your powers, open the door. Planet. So, as you open this door, you are met with another room. Now, this room, though, you see is... Uh, frost covers a bloated trestle table that stands amid rotting barrels and casks. Um, this is... Hold on. I need to make sure I'm describing the right room. Uh, because this kind of got messed around. Do, 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 do. No, actually, it's over here. Just kidding. So, this rectangular room is strewn with pieces of rotting wood and rusted metal. The remnants of giant weapons and weapons racks. A rusted out helmet sized for a giant lies near the back wall. Looks to be an ancient armory of sorts. More useless stuff. King Rava is going to um, just take a look down the corridor right now. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for? Just actually seeing what was there more than anything else. Just the like, two open. At the end? 
the two open ways, there seems to be something like that leads down maybe right in front of you, like directly at the end of the hallway. Um, and then to your right, there is a doorway. Um, so there's this, oh, this are open here and then open here and then a doorway to the right. Okay. Um, she'll walk forwards then just to take a peek at the one on the left. Okay. Crap. You take a peek into the room. And look around the corner. And you're met with a couple things. Oh, are those stairs? Hmm. Yup. All right. Ugh. So from here, <laughs> like I said, you see a couple things. Um, <clears throat> first of the things that you see will be... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome back, Jolly. Uh, let's see. Frost covers a bloated trestle table that stands amid rotting barrels and casks in the middle of what used to be a kitchen. Storage racks along the walls have collapsed into piles of rotted timber along with the jugs, tankards, and drinking horns that once rested on them. A roasting spit lined with icicles is mounted above a 10-foot diameter iron brazier coated with rime and situated near the back wall. On top of that, you see an ascending staircase of ice in the corner that has mist rolling down it. That nice. mist tells me that's a note barrier. What's on my right? On your right, there is a doorway. Uh, let's see. Well, um, can so I there take a is... peek down that area by, um, that got, seems to go down? Yeah, yeah so you want to go over there? there? Okay, so you take a peek down the staircase that leads downwards. Now, at the end of this hallway, uh, you are met with uh, six slender gargoyle-like creatures made of ice squat on ledges nearly 20 feet above you that protrude from the wall of this semicircular chamber. Near the back wall, the mist that blankets the floor flows down a staircase made of polished ice. So currently, as you're walking around, you are knee deep in a mist that you guys like kick up every time you take a step. And that Here. mist continues downwards. <clears throat> and of course, <throat> that icy doorway. You're right. She's just going to call back and say, um, I think I found the, a staircase too, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I've, I've found some stairs. Which one do we want to go in? Probably. Um, uh, did we open the door before we head in either direction? Fair point. Yeah, fair point. Oh. Ah. Grimley's just going to check the room that we're already in while they do the other room. Just make sure that we don't miss anything. Yeah, you make your way in here. Uh, you can give me an investigation check. Sure. Uh, investigation. Eleven. Eleven? Uh, you do not seem to find anything, of course, of value or of use here. It seems to be okay. a an armory full of ancient, rusted, and ill-fitting armor and equipment. Any javelins? No javelins. All right. Then I'm out. Uh, Alana will make her way down to the other door to try and open it. They're just Val following behind. Yeah, Valeny will slowly follow behind as well. You want to go to the door to open it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me strength. Strength athletics. I'll help her. 22. Uh, that is a 14 for me. Okay. Same thing, different story. Different, uh, same thing, different uh, day. There we go. That's what I meant to say. And you open the door. Olanu kind of really, really like having to struggle, but pushes it open. In this room. Oh. 
That's wicked. Fire is incredible. In this room. Are those Skyrim potions of healing? <laughs> on the table? Yeah, if it was Skyrim, yeah, it would definitely be appealing. Um, in the middle of this immense hall stands a 30 foot long, 10 foot wide, and 10 foot high dining table carved from ice and surrounded by a dozen blocks of ice that served as chairs. Wooden braces against the west wall, or the east wall, excuse me, hold a pair of 14 foot long bulges made from hollowed out mammoth tusks. Uh, Did I say bulges? <laughs> My yes. bad. Yeah. Definitely didn't mean that. Uh, a 14 foot long bugles made ah, from bugle. hollowed out m mammoth tusks. Way more sense. Well, yeah. That's um, cool. Are those six statues that are on the map actually Decorative. there or is it just cool? Okay. Uh, take one of those bugles. Okay. They're 14, they're 14, They're 14 feet, feet long. Feet. You uh, <laughs> you take one of the bugles Rack. off the wall and it like slams you into the ground with its weight. <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, wooden braces against the wall hold a pair of 14 foot long bugles made from Jeez. hollowed out mammoth tusks. Uh, it is essentially just like a gigantic French horn. Wicked. It looks like a feast hall. Yeah. Do we want to ascend or descend? So, back in the Underdark, I read a book that was called Lady of the Blings. And that always told me that if you go upwards, that's always where you're going to find the very angry, powerful people. There was a lot of towers in that book. Um, so why don't we try looking downstairs before we decide to go up, especially considering who we just heard in our heads just a little while ago. Down is usually where the beasts are. But it's also where the people who own the house usually don't spend their days. Well, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't really a tower, per se. It's more of a mountain. So I think that whoever we heard could basically be anywhere. Um, personal opinion. But if you want to go down first, that's fine. I don't care. We're here for an artifact, right? So... Yes. Maybe it's in their storeroom? Which would likely be downstairs. Let's go. Let's go down. And I will start walking down the stairs. I will quickly I will quickly follow behind her. <laughs> yeah. So Leodin makes her way towards the stairs and like gets caught by the collar again <laughs> and pulled behind Leodin. Or I'm sorry, and pulled behind Olanu. <laughs> And uh, you guys... No, you can just ask to go first. You don't have to choke me every time. Yeah, well, I can Not take really more my of a thing. beating than you can. Yes, <laughs> you were going to talk about it for hours. Anyway, I should just keep going down the stairs. Okay. So, <laughs> you note that these stairs underneath the mist that uh, that is basically... Um, covering up your, your feet up to your, your shins or your knees um, is extremely, extremely slippery. Uh, while you're making your way down the staircase, uh, each stair leads, uh, again, another four foot drop from the, from the next. Oh, sorry, I forgot you can move your character. That's all right. How dare you take my agency from me? Sorry, sorry. 
Uh, and you begin to make your way down, but as you do begin to make your way down, you are met with some extremely slippery ice. So, uh, I need you to make, um, a dexterity acrobatics check, please. All of us? Uh, yeah, Great. if you're going downstairs and you're not, like, flying, then yep. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty God awesome. Damn it. Pretty it. awesome. Twenty. Twenty-two. Oh wow. Okay, twenty-two. Uh, so twenty, twenty-two, 13. thirteen, ten, ten. Um, I have a dex of nineteen, and I rolled a seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, even with a seven, um. As everybody is all climbing downstairs and, and making their way God down this uh, this staircase, uh, you hear, huh! and as you look behind, <laughs> and uh, very not, non-gracefully uh, coming down oh, the geez. steps, you drop four foot down onto the next step, roll a little bit, slide a little bit on that ice, and drop again to the next four foot step. Uh, if go he's ahead. within reach of me, can I try and help him? Yeah, I mean, by the time he gets to you, he's already kind of come to a stop, and his back is okay. just, like, flat against the ice. Um, oh, and yeah. uh, let's see, you will take uh, a d6 of damage as you roll onto the ice there. You only take one Sweet. damage, so you're good. Nice. Yeah. Are these, like, there's no rails or anything on these steps. It's just a drop, right? It's just a drop, yeah. Okay, Grimley's gonna use his axe the rest of the way as a anchor. Use your what? Sorry, I missed that. My, it's gonna use his axe. Okay. As an anchor and yeah. just slowly drop down each step. I'm going to dive head first off the side of the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> it, dive head and first. And just save you, save you, save you the trouble. In embarrassment, he just like this. Oh, bye guys. It just jumps. <laughs> yeah. Just save you the trouble of killing me, and I'll just do it myself. Okay. <laughs> so you all descend uh, a, a large staircase. The staircase is about 90 feet from the top uh, all the way down. Um, but after is... after descending a few steps and getting your, your hold uh, and Abel kind of slipping and falling on one of the steps, uh, you make your way down. Now, before you do I anything, that. you hear the sounds, a weird sound. Almost like a sled. You hear like a coming quickly in your direction. Oh, God. Oh, shit. I pull out my weapon. Okay, you can pull out your weapon. Is it, uh, but is again, it dark in here? Uh, yeah, it's quite dark. There's no light really emanating anywhere. I'm uh, now, there is light from Leoden's staff. She's cast light on her, uh, not on her <clears> staff, <throat> but on her, um, Bro her brooch. Bro um, and uh, so there is a little bit of light emanating from there. So, okay. what's to I'll our left? Light on an arrow. Okay. What's that, Grim? Can I just take off in a dead sprint towards our left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You just take off in a dead and sprint. As you do, I'm hugging, you do hugging this, the wall. You get off the staircase, and this floor is even more slippery than the last. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> I need you. You go ahead and uh, make me a dexterity acrobatics check again. Oh, that is a five. <laughs> <laughs> you take off on the ice, like you jump off the staircase and begin running in this direction and take like three steps before just absolutely fucking biffing it and landing on your ass Not and like sliding a little bit like on your ass. Uh, and you kind of disappear be beneath, like, the, the, the fog. fog. <laughs> all, you guys see, all you guys see is, like, the fog kind of, like, poofing up in areas, like, where he uh, is sliding. Um, but as alive? I was saying... Yeah. There's something down here! Ah! <laughs> as I was saying, <laughs> you hearing that noise uh, and <laughs> grimly freaking out, uh, suddenly... Uh, coming to what a stop... Fuck? Right next to you guys. The toad. Coming to a stop right next to you guys. Unfortunately, uh, oh, geez, what happened? Where did Ken just go? Oh. <laughs> no, that's not Ken. That's 
That's Velony. Velony. Yep. Ken just disappeared. Uh, one second. Let me find Ken. Actually, I don't need to find Ken. I can just do this. I forgot. This is what's nice about Tailspire, too, is if you lose the tokens, you can always just go like this and, like, pull them from here. Bloop. And their character actually disappears off the map and gets uh, pulled from wherever they're at. Um, anyways, so uh, coming from the, the shadows, basically, because of the light in the area, you see a giant walrus coming towards you. It comes to a stop and uses its tusks to kind of like dig into the ice to come to like a complete stop. Looks around. Who are you? <clears throat> I just hold up a finger out of the oh. steam or the mist. <laughs> uh, lost. We're lost. <laughs> Hello, lost. Oh, I've never met a walrus, and let alone a talking one. How do you do? Hello! And he just kind of, like, waves one of his big old flippers towards you. Some of the mist kind of being picked up with it. What are you doing down here? Sliding around, what are you doing? Well, that's kind of <laughs> what we're doing, too. At okay. least the loss over there is. <laughs> Attempt to stand up. Yeah, you stand up and you like your legs like slip out from under you like four or five times until you like stop and catch yourself. And you just hear. <laughs> Allie, you so, said you had a question. Yeah, um, I would. Alanu just kind of looks down at him. We're looking for something. What you looking for? <laughs> Villainy, can you describe what it is we're looking for? I don't... A magical item. I don't know what it looks like. Ah, it's We're looking for the... something called the Cotical of White, I believe it is. It's a Cotical of Ice. Uh... Of White. Cotical of White. And he kind of like looks around and he goes, I don't know what that is. Insight check. Okay. <laughs> now your guys' oh. research didn't figure out what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Blame Valony for this one. Oh, that's actually good. That's 21. <laughs> okay. Uh, he doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. He has a very confused walrus face on him. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but he might, like, you know, he, he might be willing to answer uh, more questions, uh, if they're asked. Uh, what's your name? My name is Ukuma. Oh. oh what a cool name. How long have you been down here? A long time. Uh. Uh. I don't know. Long time. Do you know who this place <laughs> belongs to? Yeah. The Frost Maiden. Do you know where she is? I don't know right now. Do you know where she was last time you saw her? Uh, I don't really leave this place. All right. Do you Is it safe any... down here? Yeah. And he, he looks over. Floor? He looks over at you and he goes, "Well, as long as you don't fall." What's do you mind if we? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if we look around? Place? Um. Sure, you look round. And he goes, uh, to the south, there be an open door. Uh, there are, uh, where they keep stuff. Um, to the north up there, uh, there's, a a, a, a tomb for dead people. Um, and, uh, I... I I've heard that, uh, in order to 
uh, get into the area to south, uh, you need to pass tests. Oh, that sounds like a place you'd keep powerful artifacts. Other than us, right. are there any other living creatures down here? Uh, me. Are there any dead creatures down here? <laughs> yeah, uh, he just said there was. But do the dead, dead creatures ever move? I haven't seen it. Okay. You'd like to come along with us as we search um, the rooms? Uh, I don't leave here, really. I like to slide and have fun. So this is a very big ask, and I understand if he, you're going to say no. And he I just kind of starts sliding circles around I, you I while you talk. It. Can I right. maybe ride you while you slide? Like once, just once. Hmm. Give me a persuasion check. Sixteen. Sixteen. For the sixteen, he goes, uh, okay. And he just slides over to you and then stops by using his tusks again and then just looks over and he goes here you go and just turns around i climb on his back hold on and you he like takes one like lunge with his legs and you go fucking fly it gives like super fast through here like the smoke and everything like that on the ground is constantly like getting thrown up almost like it's a wake of water and you guys start sliding around this entire area. What uh, is this adventure? Awesome. It's freezing cold, by the way. <laughs> like, freezing cold. Uh, Leoden, you're like, your eyes are watering from, like, how fast you're going and, like, how cold it is here. Do you see anything while you're riding around? Uh, that fast? Probably not. Go ahead and roll but... a perception check while you're riding around. Okay. Let it be. I don't know why I forget my perception. That is a 26. <laughs> Almost as high as I could possibly roll it. Uh, you see Oriole. You see Oriole. <laughs> she's right over there. Yeah, she's been in front of you the whole time. <laughs> um, so as you're riding around, you, you get the layout of the area. Uh, the layout of the area is shaped basically like a snowflake. Ooh. Oh. Um, I so, think it would be. Go ahead. You said something. I think it would be best to save the south door for last. Maybe some of the questions have to do with this, these chambers. Maybe. So I'll kind of show you around as you as you ride. Um. So. Uh, riding around, you see small areas tucked into the non-hallways, kind of like extensions of the rink. And you see old, like, camp sites, essentially, uh, that have been lost to time. Uh, you know, whatever was here uh, is long gone. Um, you know, the, the stuff is withering away or broken, um, but you do see that. Uh, you see that in a couple corners, but other than that, this whole area is just one giant ice rink. Um, like I said, cool. in a couple areas, you kind of see a few things. Now, that being oh. said, there are things of note. The snowflake is is basically cut up into um, five, five, six, six, excuse me, six inner pieces. Okay, so it's like, you know, uh, two on the top. One on the left, one on the right, and then two on the bottom. Um, so uh, you see them, and each one of them are like one of these little outcroppings of the um, the ice rink that leads into like an old camp or something. The the four that you can see, right? But the two that you can't see, the ones to your left and right, are guarded by a large door. So there's like a door to the left and a door to the right. Now. I'm going... Off right. of those five um, inner pieces, mm -hmm. extend an additional uh, six 
inner pieces. I, I, I outer pieces. So it's it, it's six and six. I don't know why I keep saying five. So six inner pieces, six outer pieces. The six outer pieces reach out in a star-like formation. So it's like directly to the north, which he was just talking about. Uh, directly, yep. Uh, directly to the south. And then your four corners. So northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. <clears throat> Imagine a snowflake such as this. I got you. I'll show you. That's the landing screen. So it's based like that. I don't gotcha, want to give gotcha. too much away, so I'm keeping it blurry and, and bright. But you got you get the layout. It's six inner and six outer chambers. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I get you now. Okay. So All that's right. what you get with that awesome perception check and the fact that you're riding around on the The Walrus. The walrus so, comes to a uh, stop back at the group. Yes. And yep. like comes to a halt and using the tusks comes to like a complete stop and uh, he goes <gasps> that was fun that was so much fun thank you so much I say as I like slide off <laughs> no problem well, which way should we go first Layden? and I will tell everybody about the snowflake the basically yeah. going that the little spots in the corners, we don't really need to worry about, but the two, there are two doors as we can see, and then there are six more hallways. Mm -hmm. Each one of these hallways that you saw kind of like <clears throat> coming off the, the snowflake to the north and south, they're open. But okay. the four that kind of like X out from the original mm -hmm. look, those have doors as well as the two to the side that you see. Okay. Yeah. So I think we should maybe open the doors the little to the little places first, because I think fewer bad things will be there. <laughs> and then we decide what we're gonna do. I cannot. Um, um that sounds fine with me. Yeah. Sure. Left or right. I couldn't okay. see in them. Left it is. Closest. Nope, left it is, though. Sorry about that. Yeah, we can hydrate. <laughs> we can hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate. Oh, hey. Thank you, Ebola. Uh, heading left, Dan. Heading left. left. It is. Yes. I will the door, open the door. Yeah, door's gigantic. Needs help pushing. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> 10. I'm going to stay right here on these stairs. 16. <laughs> oh, no. All right. 10 and 16. You try to push the door open, and uh, when you do, your footing slips out from under you, and you both, like, slide on the ice. Mm. <clears throat> the walrus that is just currently, like, skiing around you guys or skating around you guys is, just, like, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking walrus. <laughs> um. I think now's a good time to put the pittons on. Yep. So I stopped sliding around so much. Okay. I've had my on nods since we came in here. Yeah. <laughs> crampons here too, yeah. Yeah, crampons, that's what I mean. Crampons, yeah. Um, let's uh, try that one more time. Okay, go for it. Much better. 20. 15. <laughs> Olanu, your footing just doesn't catch, but Grimly, luckily enough, with his crampons, pushes hard and the door slides open. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you first. Okay. I'm walking to the room. Yeah, you walk into the room. Now, as the door slides open, um, you are met with uh, what looks to be like... Um, some sort of uh, room that is also 
uh, full of old and decaying gear um, that is much like the the rooms that you had seen in the open ski or the open ice rink area. Uh, but here it's just a closed ice rink area. Search through these boxes and stuff. Uh, yeah, even after searching, you find that it's just old gear that uh, cannot be used. It okay. is it is decaying. <clears throat> Useless. Yeah, I'll check the other one. Probably find something similar. Okay, you guys skate across. Hop on my shield and... Okay, <laughs> Zelda style. Yeah, I like it, I like it. Breath of the Wild. your axe to row you along. <laughs> Uh, we'll say that after several attempts, the door opens. Um, and you are met with a very similar site. Uh, this one looks to be like some sort of meeting uh, hall that is in, ta in tatters. Uh, that lo thing? Long benches and everything like that lead up to a, uh, a broken down um, pedestal with like a, a, a snapped plate on top. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's anything important in here either. Yeah, which one of the halls do you guys want to check out first? Do we want to open doors or do we want to just go? I think, didn't we open the I only would... doors? No. Are there more doors or no. is there just... Long hallway, there were doors. They're closed too. Why don't we These try opening all of the doors ones. just so we know what's behind them before we try yep. and go in any solid directions? Okay. Which right. doors would you like? There's basically le all that's left door wise are the star formation, the star shape of doors um, in the area. So, like your northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Let's try northwest, I guess. What do you guys yeah, want? Why not? Let's do it. Northwest. Start there northwest. and then go and then go clockwise around the room. Yeah, we that can just go full circle then, yeah. Okay. Um let's see. Where are we? Just to make sure there's no more frost giants hiding behind these doors to attack us from nowhere. So this large area that you see, <clears throat> there is a large door in front of it. And in front of this door, um, carved into the lintel above it, you see in, the, in a common language, in the common language, you see the word cruelty. Oh, well, that's a pleasant idea. That's oh, a great start to these doors. Cool, 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 cool. It's not forbidden at all. No. Now the door is a little bit into the inner sanctum of this area, uh, if you will. If you take a look at the the map right now, um, the door mm -hmm. there's like a huge open archway that leads into like the snowflake like shape and everything like that. Right around here is where the door is. Uh, push forward. You want to yeah. go up to the door? All of you guys up to the yeah. door? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> this was my idea, so I'm not going to, like, toss everyone into it. I'm going to look around. Is there any arrow slits or anything? <laughs> any traps? Yeah. I don't want to get shot. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. I was thinking the same thing. So yeah, you look around and you do not see any kind of like openings or arrow slits or anything like that. It is, okay, it is was... essentially a mountain carved of ice and 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 rock. And so, um, no asshole that, behind yeah, walls. All, all that you see is 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 very visible and very open. Um, except Did you this have that giant door above which says uh, cruelty. Did you have the same vision I had, Brad, of, like, the Indiana Jones tomb thing coming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Step on a stone and it yeah. lowers, and next thing you know, we're trapped inside this room. All right. I'm just, I'm going to say, let me just put my head up, see if I can hear anything on the other side. Okay. Sounds good to me. 
And then I'll go place my ear against the door just to see if I hear anything. Okay, I'm gonna take control of your character because there is no door. I just want to place you like right in front of it. Sweet. All right. Yes. So there's no door yet big enough to encompass an entire like gigantic cavernous hallway. So yeah. we'll just pretend that there's huge doors there. But you walk up to the door and you put your ear up to it, you said, to like listen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception check. <laughs> that's uh love that that's good that's, that's good. a one that's uh right. that's a i will total nail you an one. entire <laughs> rabbit forget the foot i will nail you a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so also, maybe can you stop rolling in tail spire <laughs> yeah so uh stretch as you guys yep uh as you guys watch uh abel creep up to the doorway and place his ear up to it. It's immediately frozen to the The wall. second he touches <laughs> the door. Fuck. A cloud of whitish blue smoke and fog takes Abel's shape and blows to the wind. Abel, you disappear. Ooh. Going. And before and before you guys do anything, the rest of you disappear into a fog of smoke. Keep it cool, cool, cool. And you Thank are God, met, I'm not alone. You are met with utter darkness, and in the darkness, in the darkness, you hear the words. Only those words of my tribe. Now we you have access to but a fraction of my power. Devote your own life to me, and I will show you a world of everlasting beauty. Forever, forever stuck in time, and I see a paradise, a permanent perfection. You feel yourself falling through the darkness, and you pop up somewhere completely different. And I will take God you now. Nope. Take you now. Here. Hold on, we'll wait for it. It gets better. The fuck? What is this place? Oh, I thought I made one for old what's her butt. Melanie? Yes, I didn't. Hold on, I just need to find her again. Uh. What the fuck was she? There she is. Who's the wizard? Okay. <clears throat> As you get teleported through, your surroundings vanish in a flurry of snow and ice. And when your vision clears, actually, let me turn down the sound a little bit. Uh, let's see, as your vision clears, you find yourself standing at the edge of a camp, its tents holding fast against the raging blizzard. So you can imagine these tents and the fires and everything that you see <laughs> blowing heavily in the wind. Um, as you guys are standing there, you kind of reapparate into the world. Oh man, my camera is lagging like crazy. How's your cameras looking? Can you guys move around? Okay, sorry, I don't know what was happening. My camera was lagging. I'm good now. I'm good now. All right. Um, as you guys look around, uh, you apparate into place, and the second you apparate, 
you gain the attention of some individuals that are looking at you in your direction. You! What are you doing here? We have no idea. You look, uh, you kind of like look at them and they first look angry at you, uh, but then suddenly uh, they look very like wide-eyed. As you look at each other, you can see a small glinting snowflake slowly turning in the air directly above each and every one of your foreheads. What the fuck? Like it's just staying right here? Yeah, it just kind of like floats in front of your 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 forehead and kind of like twirls uh, almost like, like an atom. Cool. So I always breathe frost and I've got a magical snowflake. Yeah, now you got a little magical snowflake in your face. Um, I tried to grab it. <laughs> it, it, it just disappears in front of you. Yeah. What, what, what is this place? Uh, he goes, I, uh, uh, and he kind of like puts his head down, like to not look at you directly. And he goes, please just follow me. I just look at the rest of them and start walking forward. I follow. Yeah, I'm going to follow him too. They lead you to the center of camp. To which you are met with a strange scene. Oh, no. Let me light this up a little bit. We're cursed. We are now... Ice sculpture. We have some sort of time limit, I guarantee it. There we go. And let me lead you guys to the center of camp. Tell Spire so cool. It is. This is wicked. Look at this. Look at this shit. <laughs> he just popped a couple torches in there and it's lit up. I can see inside these goddamn tents. This is great. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you approach, met with a strange sight, you are presented before what looks to be the leader of this uh, this tribe of kind of like barbarians almost, but they look uh, to be um, all kind of similarly dressed. Many of them wearing polar bear-like um, furs. Uh, and also the person that you get led to has like the top jaw of a polar bear and like the top skull portion of a polar bear um, that is still furred and everything uh, adorning his head as a helmet as it rolls down are, his back as a cape. Are they human or are they Goliath psycho long -term? They're human. Okay. Is there They're any check I could make to buff? See if I minutes. know where we are or who these people are. Yeah, go for it. Make a history check. Oh, sweet history. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, 18. Nice. 18. Uh, you would recognize this as uh, a Reged tribe. The wandering okay. tri uh, tribal people of the I of Icewind Dale, the the people who are nomadic that kind of roam along uh, roam along uh. lands, and being that you see that they have bear regalia, uh, you probably believe this to be the tribe of the bear. Got it. Uh, Sick. As you're approaching, you can see that there are currently four, what look like elderly individuals that are um, put on the ground with, uh, with cloth over their eyes uh, and cloth kind of tying their hands behind their back. You see the guy like that I had described before that has the bear skin uh, helmet that leads down into a cape that is currently like looking down at them and a bunch of other individuals looking in on the scene. And as you approach the guy with... Uh, the bearskin looks over at you and he goes, Who are you? What brings you here? Uh, 
Hi. Do I guess... Oh, Grimly, go ahead. Um... We're a group of... Travelers trying to end the... The night. He looks at you and he says... He, he kind of like... Nods his head and accept like uh, in acknowledgement, um, and then uh, says, "Emissaries of the Frost Maiden," and he like puts his head down, and he goes, "We welcome you." And he goes, "You have been brought here during dire times. We have run out of food. It said it seems we've." run out of all kinds of food, even feeding upon our own sled dogs before making this dire decision. We have chosen these elders as sacrifice. They will feed us until we can find more in the ice, in, in the, in the dale. You can't, you can't possibly eat them. We must. You survive. You'll get sick. It will elongate, elongate our lives until we find more food. Kinrava's going to walk up to one of the elders. You hear it like a muffled, like, as it struggles on the ground. This one has like oh. uh, old tattered clothing and stuff like that. Um, you see gray hair that runs down its 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 back. It has like a braided hair kind of um, running down the back of its uh, its neck. Uh, it hears you approaching and like rolls its head forward. to the side just to, to look at you. Did they consent to this? It is not their choice to make. It is mine. For the good Why? of my people. For the survival of You need to decide. Kinrava's going to just draw her dagger and stab one of them in the neck. Oh. Okay. Cool. Uh, Kin, you pull your dagger and you stab the old man in the neck. Uh, you hear a gargling of blood. <laughs> as he struggles to survive, like wiggling on the ground, trying to escape it, but can't grab it with his hands because it's tied behind his back. And slowly but surely, the blood drains out of him and he stops moving. Bon appetit. You hear the rest of them, uh, like the rest of the old men who, who had heard this one die, uh, begin to like whimper and like cry and like try to roll on the ground to try and get away. You see the, the captain kind of like call over people and they go and they grab the uh, the individual you killed and like pull him off to the side. Remember, they said we would have to go through tests in order to get what we wanted. And what was on top of the door? Cruelty. You, you killed him. It's a test. Truth be told, this is probably a magical projection. How can you be sure? Because we're here. This could all simply be in our heads. And I'm not going to let myself get bogged down by mental games. Ice is beginning to like build up on like all of your clothes due to the winds and the frost and the snow. Is there anything Quick different question. about the snowflakes? That they're like uh, projections of snowflakes. They're not real. They're not like an actual snowflake kind of just dancing in front of you. It's like, um, yeah, it's just like a pro projected illusion, basically. So Kins didn't change at all when she did that? Nope. Um, quick question. Meant to ask this when we were still in Fortress. Yep. Uh, is Cuckoo here? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Cuckoo would have been teleported along with you. Cool. I, I, 
can't do this. I can't. I'm... I'm walking away and trying to find some place to just... hang out by myself. Table. Um, as you walk away, uh, he goes, um, emissaries, is this not what we should do? Of course it isn't. Then tell how us, how are we to survive? How long has it been since you ate? Going on an entire week now. How many people are in your tribe? Now. He looks around and he goes, we are but 30 large in our individual tribe. Many have already fallen to hunger and the cold. <laughs> I can see you the have to why, why aren't why aren't you out hunting? We, we have been. What do you think we've been doing? We run out of game. There is no game. There is no food. What have us what would you have us do? He like looks down and just like stabs the fucking guy right in front of him while he's talking and saying this. He like takes his sword and plunges it down deep in the to the spine of the an individual that was laying down in front of him. And by doing so, like literally the guy doesn't even make a noise. It just like slips in and then that's it. The guy just like stops moving. No. This individual carries him away. You could die with honor. How is dying to the weather honor? We have lived here for many years and survived many winters, even the worst. So you there is no honor. Turn yourself into this? There's no honor in what you're doing? Why do you speak killing of honor? Killing people. Yes, that is what we do to survive. Living honors the tribe. Surviving. Surviving. That is the nomadic way. No matter the cost. Perhaps your tribe doesn't deserve to live. He like narrows his eyes. And he goes, what would you have us do, Emissary? You don't have the will to find another way to survive? We have tried die. everything. This is just the last resort. Do you think I did not no. take the time to contemplate any other solution? Do you think I enjoy killing my own kind so that we may survive but maybe another week? If you can give me another solution, then so be it. But if not, he takes his knife and slices the back of the next guy's, like, neck. It makes sense to me. I'm going to uh, turn around and knock an arrow and point it. Okay. He, 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 he kind of like of how many there are. He kind of like... <laughs> 30. Steps back. Yeah, there's about 30 around you. Uh, all around you. <laughs> like over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over there. No. Uh, you don't know how many are in the tents. That kind of stuff. And then, um... You did answer my question, though. But yeah, you know, know I'm just gonna... Going. You knock the arrow, and when you knock the arrow, he kind of, like, pauses for a second, like, furls his eyebrows, and he just kind of, like, steps back. And then I'll just whisper it to myself, whatever it takes. And then I'll shoot the arrow at the last elder. <laughs> okay. So, like, I imagine Abel is, like, pointing at the, uh, the tribe leader at first and then says that and, like, closes his eyes and slowly turns to the, or quickly, like, turns to the elder and lets loose the arrow. 
the arrow makes a squelching sound as it enters the skull of the elder. And finally, the last elder stops moving as blood begins to pour out of it. The, the leader calls over the last of the uh, tribe members to grab this elder and drag him away. And he looks at you and he goes, we must survive. And he goes, if the frost maiden would have it any other way, she would have shown us. I do appreciate you challenging my morals. It made me look deep inside. But what must be done, must be done. And he kind of like tilts his head towards you. When he tilts his head towards you, the snowflakes on your forehead, or like that are floating in front of you, slam into your forehead, sending your head reeling backwards and you go flying back into the snow. And when you land and hit the snow, you continue on as if it was just a cloud. Woof. And disappear. Fuck. <laughs> Valeny was there, also. <laughs> <laughs> he also would have killed somebody, though, probably. <laughs> uh, she'll just leave the senseless murdering to you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, for now. Uh, yeah, for now. You all reappear, but as you reappear, you reappear over here on the other side of the doorway. Grimley's just on his hands and knees. Uh. Grimly on his hands and knees. He doesn't understand what just happened. And I... The door slowly behind you just automatically <laughs> begins to open. A test is that the spider queen used to give us similar tests in the underdark they're tests of resolve what you're willing to do to survive but for the most part it's all in your head uh abel is just walking out he's leaving okay, okay. you see the door's opened right Play. What do you want to do? We're already through the door. I would like to warm my hands with prestidigitation. Okay. Take out my mandolin and play for a minute. Specifically, I am focusing on Grimly. Okay. Uh, you guys, Grimly is kind of like still like on hands and knees as Abel kind of walks out of the room. Uh, Abel, right behind you, Veleni follows. Genrava is going to follow as well. You follow. Is there anything in this room other than just the uh, weird beautiful lights? like ice crystals that are just like hanging off the walls and off of like uh, the stones and stuff like that? Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful chamber. Um, but other than its natural beauty, you do not see anything here. Okay. Yeah. Alanu will turn. Look out. As they're doing that, Kinrava's going to just look down a little bit and sort of check her dagger. Mm hmm Just to see if there's any blood still on it. There very much is. Oh. She's gonna keep that to herself and just sheath it. Yeah. Would anyone else have noticed that? Uh, unless she was secretly doing it. I don't know. Were you secretly trying to look at your deck, kind of like trying to peek at it? Sure. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, sleight of hand real quick. Uh, no, let, go, go ahead and roll stealth. That'd be stealth. And we'll okay. go uh, passive perception for everybody else. Uh, that is not Leoden or Grimly. Oh, that's really good. Um, that is stealth. Mm -hmm. That's a dirty 20, actually. I got a 19. Very nice. Good Very thing nice. I'm not looking. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, as a matter of fact, uh, 
you can you kind of like pull your cloak up uh, open to the side and uh, like slowly um, look down at the dagger and slowly put it back down, and you do notice a trail of like fresh blood on it, but you place it back in. Oh boy, that is not what I expected to find. That's not All right, what I thought I'd find. Leoden, uh, a minute passes as everybody kind of awaits in the next chamber. Okay, um, so I want to use my enthralling performance, but I don't really want to charm Grimly. I want to soothe Grimly. Okay, we can say that you can Will try you and allow use... that. Yeah, yeah, we'll say that you could try and okay. use it to, to do this this mental gymnastics uh, that is that magic power um, to try and soothe Grimly from what just fucking happened. Uh, so go ahead, Grimly. I need you to make a um, wisdom saving throw. wisdom. Yeah, yep. go to make me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, make it at... Uh. I, w I want to say make it at disadvantage. Uh, this That was a rough, rough scene. Yeah, I failed. It was 11. Okay, so that's Perfect. good. So what happens is you do want to fail that. Um, so, uh, I hope so, yeah, what happens is Leoden playing her, her melody seems to uplift your soul. Um, the, the melody is uh, not um, a like a jovial tune or anything like that. It's not meant to like make you happy, uh, but it leads you in a more epic fashion. I need to put my glasses back on Jesus. Um, in a more epic fashion, uh, almost like a, um, uh, what is it called? A commiserating fashion. Yeah. Uh, allows kinda reminds me to... of, it kind of reminds me of back home and, mm. uh, I'll say a quick prayer for the people. I'm not sure whether they were real or not to have yeah. died. Yeah, absolutely. And you place, you place your hand, you like place your hand on the ground when you place your hand on the ground four like small lines of golden light begin to flow out of the tips of your four fingers and they take place but they like kind of float across the ground and then slowly crawl up the wall in front of you and each one marks like a dwarvish symbol mm. on the wall like a golden light and you believe that your prayer for the four individuals is complete and I'll stand up and thank you, Biden. Don't think it's going to get easier. I don't know how it could be harder. And I'll keep walking out. Yep. So nearly side by side, Leoden and Grimly follow and and come back to the party. All so right. So are we going to be going in a clockwise direction, like we said? I don't know what warm. else we can do. I suppose. All right. So, because we are trying to end today at 3:30 uh, or around 3:30-ish, um, let's go ahead and take today's uh, break. We can try and get back as soon as we can. That way, we can get as much game as in as possible. So, quickly take a bathroom break. Quickly grab something to drink, and we'll be right back with more rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. We'll see you real quick. We'll see you soon. Right quick. I like how we go from a giant walrus sliding around on ice to murdering four innocent elderly people in the span of... Yeah, say, like, that is literally this whole campaign in a fucking... Eight, like, in a nutshell. nutshell. Like, literally, like... <laughs> I, it is, like, goofy one second, and then it's, like, horrific the next. Yeah, uh... If you hadn't shot that old guy, I was going to attack the leader. Woo! Woo! I would have loved to see that. TPK. <laughs> That's the only reason I didn't. Just 30 standing around. Abel, that was a cool ass move, though. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to use the rush. Seth walking up and stabbing was cool. Fuck. God. Yeah. Didn't see I'm that coming. Grab a non-alcoholic drink, Ooh. otherwise I'm gonna be gone by the end of this. Charging session. battery. <laughs> wow, what a power move! What do you think of that, chat? I'm pretty sure Kenrava and 
Abel just killed somebody. Yeah, like real people, like somewhere yep. out in the tundra. Mm hmm. We just got poofed there and got tested. Yeah. I was thinking maybe it was somewhere in the future. But. Yeah, maybe. Nobody else had. Like, what? what is Emissary of the Frostmaiden? Yeah, do they fucking praise her? Like, she's the reason they're in this fucking mess. Ugh. Oh, I'll be right back. Yeah. All right, it's just me and you, chat. Nobody else can hear me. <laughs> Yeah, when and where. What's going on, Earth? How you doing, bud? I'm chilling. Okay. Back oh my god. <laughs> well played, Seth. That was cool. What do you mean well wicked. played? <laughs> well, I mean, hey, just because Grimly did, doesn't like it doesn't mean do I don't. The thing. Honestly, like real talk, I thought it was just like, oh, this is just a mindscape sort of thing. Like, you know, <laughs> like the lifted thing from Baldur's Gate 3. I'm like, oh, this is just a thing. Oh, no, no, there's still blood. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So metagame wise, metagame wise, literally says the characters are not dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> So metagame, metagame, metagame. I mean, my character doesn't care all that much. Me yeah, as the yeah. player does. Oh shit! <laughs> Me as the player, or the the player, thought that was wicked. <laughs> Me as the character is like, our group is insane. <laughs> how could they? How could? She is a drow. How could Abel? How could Abel oh. do that? <laughs> I made a promise. That was a hell of a good takes. fucking turn. I honestly, I thought you released the arrow for the for the thief, but when you said you yeah. turned and hit that, I was like, dude, that is so cool. Yes. <laughs> Roll team. I was like, is this too much for my Kinrava character? Dude, nah, nah, it's not. I'm doing it. I'm doing <laughs> it all in. Once, once you explained it, it made sense. All those people are going to get mad cow disease for humans. <laughs> yeah, they're going to get Kuru. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's not a solution. <laughs> they don't know any better. Grimly, are we the bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm a bad. I'm I'm a villain. I don't think I'm a villain. I am not. <laughs> uh, that is. Can Rafa might be. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. The might. question's kind of out for you. Um, that's a big <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was a mindscape. Like the player and the character thought it was like in your head, sort of thing. Then no. No, as soon as Dan was like. Uh, you see blood, and you reacted going... <clears throat> I thought, oh. <laughs> Seth thought that that was fake. <laughs> yeah. Like right. Seth thought. <laughs> so we are, we are I back. I was not convinced. <laughs> we are back. Uh, so are you guys ready to go? Yep. Sure, let's, let's go. go. With let's snowflakes. Go. Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's do this thing. We are right. special snowflakes. <clears throat> back yeah. to our... You know, role play background because we are now technically exploring stuff we've already seen so as you guys uh gives my computer a little break as well um as you guys are coming out of there you see again the, the walrus is Whee! Whee! <laughs> 
sliding across the screen. After breaking that the tension. Show. Yeah, oh breaking the tension. Like everybody's face, like in a face of horror, minus maybe, you know, Kin, min minus maybe Velony. Uh, but uh, everybody else is just like a very stoic face or whatever. And then all of a sudden, What are you guys doing? I think we're going uh, clockwise. Clockwise. Right? Yeah. Yep. So the next one. Let's go to the next, the next shit show. Yeah, let's show. see how bad this is going to be. Are we, we're skipping the graveyard, though. We're just going to the room, the whole Yeah, we're just right? going to the locked rooms, I think. The graveyard? Oh, are you talking about uh, up n you're So you're skipping north. You want to go northeast. Yeah. Just yeah, the lock, cool. just the doors that are locked. Just okay. the places with doors right now. Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so you guys, <laughs> that means that you are going <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> so that's going to be over here, actually. So. Placing their characters, and then I will take us over to Tailspire as I share the screen again. All right, let's go to Tailspire. Like I said, it looks weird for a second until I share my screen. And then it'll be good to go. Blue sky do we can do. <laughs> All right. So now that we are back in Tailspire, you can see in front of you a very similar but uh, opposing room. On this side, a like large opening that leads into a cave-like system. Uh, that kind of automatically uh, leads, or not automatically, but in the distance leads to a gigantic door. What does this one say? Yeah, you, you want to move up closer? You can to to get yeah. in there. Yeah. Or yeah. let's go. Okay. Yeah. The whole group. Let's see if it says bait. Let's see if it says baby Ida. Everybody wants bait. to go in. I mean, want is a very big word, Dan. Well, I'm saying you can go out there and skate with the walrus while somebody comes in here and does uh, whatever the door says. Don't tempt us, Dan. Let's, okay. let's do this shit. Okay, all right. I'm going to kill that walrus. No, don't kill him. No. He's my friend. Don't kill the walrus. No. <laughs> He's the freight I mean, He probably could have fed those people. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that. <laughs> I'm like, you know, if we killed that thing, we could have given have them the walrus. If you have any other, any other decision or any other solution, guys, any other solution. No? Okay, we kill these guys. All right, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> I was like, I How would we, we have gotten back for him? <laughs> Speaking okay. of which. So, you guys get up to this door, and as oh, you yeah, do. That box, that box probably wrecked now because East Haven got nuked. You guys well, at least see we got paid for it. Oh, above wait. above the lintel of this one, part of it has broken off, <laughs> but characters can still be made uh, can still be made out through the word in common, endurance. Oh fuck! Looks at my strength wow. score. Okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> we want to take a short rest. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Go. Let's just. Yeah. Let's get this over with. Do we think these trials have to be done as a group, or...? I have no idea. Where Whoa! Considering the last time when Abel went through the door, he was whisked away, then we were all whisked away. I don't think we have an option. The, per the Whoever's doing this is going to take whoever they want. Why, Arth? Why? Why would you do this to us, Arth? So you get to the door. It says endurance. What are you guys doing? Touching At least the, the mouth doesn't move. But the <laughs> human eyes and a goat head is so disconcerting. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I'd rather stop have blink. the worm. Don't stop blinking. Sorry. Alanu, Let's you said this. you touch it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alanu, you wake, you wake up. You walk up. And uh, you slowly put your hand on the door. The second you place your hand on the door, you disappear into a cloud of bluish white smoke. <laughs> the rest of you also disappearing. And we change back over. 
this map. The same shit. Oh no. This time. You're all teleported to the outskirts of another area. Oh, Rill's got a murder boner for the regard. Mm -hmm. No kidding. <laughs> what did the first door have on it again? Cruelty. Cruelty. Thank you. Cruelty. That's what I thought. I just wanted to the door. Cruelty. Uh, first, cruelty. First door had cruelty. the word cruelty on it. I think it said cruelty. Yep. Uh, and of course, let's not forget our uh, stupid mage friend who we always forget. Uh, Don't you worry, know. she won't be around for long. Hey, Dan even doesn't like her. No, hey, I just you always forget, forget her. Me, Dan? No, I didn't forget you. You're right there. Oh, for some reason, I'm not able to see what's happening. You're, you're That's not, all right. I'll just look at the screen share. You're not able to see what you're, what's happening. It's like on the bottom. Yeah, I'm row. still. I'm still in the. The oh, I got you. Workers. I got you, brother. I forgot to take you over here. There's a there's a pool player thing. Wait, what? I should have done it. You're not oh, over I here yet? I can read those. No, that's fine. I can just look at the, the screen share. No, what you need to do is just uh, back out and, and come back into the, the board. You okay, should be able I'll to just reload it. it. Okay, so as he reloads it. Um, so you guys teleport yet again. This time, your surroundings vanish in a flurry of snow and ice. And when your vision clears, you find yourself in a raging snowstorm, standing at the edge of a ragged tribe's camp in the process of being dismantled. The nomads work fever feverishly, feverishly to tear down their tents and pack them into dog sleds. A few of them spot you and brandish their weapons. A tall figure standing amongst them calls out. Uh, it is a, a female that kind of looks over in your direction and she says, We shall not lie down and die for your pleasure, emissaries of Oriel. Be gone, vultures. You again notice the floating crystal above your uh, foreheads. Endurance. Um, Grimly just pulls out his axe. I'm gonna shout out. We're not emissaries of Oral. I, we don't mean any harm. She looks at you and as like she brandishes the weapon, uh, a figure from behind her grabs her on the shoulder, a very tall uh, nomad and kind of calms her, her, her weapon. Um, uh, let's make this. Here we go. Kind of calms her weapon and looks over at the group. <clears throat> and um, they say, uh, or she, uh, he looks over at you and he goes, my name is King Jerund. And you see that he is wearing what looks to be a large antler-like uh um, helmet on top of his head, giant antlers of an elk coming off of it. And he goes, What brings you here? I wish we're trying, we knew. We're trying to end the night. And he kind of like looks confused at you. And he just says, We need to move. As he looks off into the distance, he goes, you can either help or stay. And he just moves. He literally just fucking ignores you. Turns around. The other girl kind of like looks like back and forth between the two and then going, goes back to join him. And you can see him grabbing goods and like t p piling them into the back of um, carts, uh, basically behind the, sn uh, the snow dogs, the sled dogs. It says endurance, so maybe we should try help him. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Alana will go towards them uh, and ask the leader. We were recently with another one of the Reged. Uh, their leader wore a bear. 
they had turned to cannibalism as a mean of survival. Have you? He turns around like slowly and he goes, we do not communicate with the tribe of the bear. Have you turned to cannibalism as well? He goes, we are far from it. We follow the elk. Where they go, we go. I would stay clear, stay clear of the bear tribe. We always have. How can we help? Help finish getting everything packed up. We move in but an hour. Okay. And Alana would just start helping. He looks off into the distance, and you can see oh. off in the distance the shadow of a large elk with glowing blue horns that is atop, uh, like, the precipice of a large hill that you can see, like, uh, uh, casting a shadow down from, like, the starry sky beyond. And he oh, looks yeah, over. yeah, we've seen these before. He looks over and he goes, maybe less. And he immediately starts packing again. Yeah, yep. Alana will help. Uh, yep. Packs yeah, away. Can, can He's rushing to help pack. Yeah, because I will also try and help. Okay. Everybody immediately starts uh, helping to pack. Melanie does not look like she's helping very much at all. She'll, like, just kick around some snow and, like, s like maybe pick up something really light and, and just toss it in with one hand. I kill Melanie. Okay. Okay. After about... Uh, Join our club. Join our club. <laughs> <laughs> After about 20 or so minutes of uh, getting the entire camp packed up, um, you see that the um, the leader of the, the elk tribe uh, stands high atop the, the large pile of goods inside the, the back of the cart there. And he reaches out his arms and he says, For the trial of the elk, we move. And he lets out like a like really loud elk call. Uh, you hear like, uh, strangely enough, like you would... You wouldn't think a human would be able to make that strange elk noise. Uh, if you haven't heard an elk, you should definitely listen to it on like YouTube or something like that. But it's a loud, like squeaking, like tube uh, noise almost. It's like it is. It's like terrifying. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But it's like l like a I really remember. loud echoing noise. Yeah, I ha I've played it on stream before. If you go back to Abel's uh, prequel, uh, you can check it out. Um, but anyways, uh, you hear him let out that noise, and when he does, um, that one elk that was standing atop the, the 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 large hillside that was in the distance disappears beyond it and you hear go and whoosh, he like slaps the uh the the dogs to uh, get them moving and when that happens the uh everybody gets pulled alongside it now there's only so many people that can get into these the rest of the tribe is running alongside it uh including yourselves in this space, does it feel like, do we have our abilities back, or does it feel like we're s it's the same? I mean, like it feels like. Can life. I attempt to uh, cast, um, find steed, or yeah, are sure. all my spells still? Because I, I have no spell slots left in the other area that we're at. Okay, but does I it mean, feel like I have my abilities back? Well, if you don't have spell slots you attempt to try and cast it or whatever but you don't feel any energy like pulsating through you knowing that okay you are exhausted of, of any know. kind of spell slot still good to know all right uh we would also gain like i would people in my vicinity so the people of my group would gain the um fast movement for travel sure yeah you gain a little bit of fast travel but you uh you you know to that even with your fast travel, you could barely keep up with these people who do this every single day of their lives all the time. Like, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you guys set off. As you set off, we move to another board. Damn. Oh. So, he say the trial of elf? Do they know that we're in trials? That's... Weird coincidence. Uh. <clears throat> Can I just say how fucking cool 
tail spires for all of this. It's so goddamn awesome. Yes. yes. Look at this. Sh look at this shit. Can I just say, <laughs> damn it, Dan, you've done an amazing job making these maps on Tailspire. Holy <laughs> shit. So a couple of these maps I have not made myself, but uh, a lot of these oh, I okay. I have uh, like the the entire Orioles Island I did not make. Someone made that, but everything else I made. Okay. Uh, outside of the fact that this one kind of came pre-generated, but I, I rearranged and made things like, you know, fit our campaign. Our campaign. Um, okay. So you guys look ahead of you as you're going. Uh, you see the tribe that you guys are following behind. Like I said, even with your increased movement and everything like that, you find yourself kind of like lagging behind them. Um, and they are chasing the uh, the animals as they cross the uh, the tundra here. The rest of the tribe and you guys. So, you guys are for the first, what seems like forever, are fine. But it goes longer and longer and longer. You start to feel very tired. And the march goes on and on. For the first eight hours of travel, Jesus. you weather it. You guys, you guys are tough. You guys push through. You guys have been traveling through Icewind Dale for quite some time now, and you're able to weather it. But it starts getting to you. And as it uh, comes down to it, uh, let me real quick take this off so we can get started again. Um, <clears throat> as it comes down to it, the ninth hour, you start to feel the weather start to truly affect you. Shit. I need everybody to make again. a constitution saving throw. Ah, shit. Natural 20. <laughs> Woo! Uh, which one 12. are you guys going to fuck me over? Okay. <laughs> 12. Do we get Grimley's bonus? 19. Would you get Grimley's bonus? Oh, true. Uh, you guys get a plus sure, three right? if you're within five feet. It's it's within five feet, so it's like you guys would have well, to be I'm, like traveling. I mean, Grimley like are pack. always <laughs> holding hands. Yeah, <laughs> or it might be ten. <laughs> it's ten feet. It's, it's ten. ten feet. Okay, if it's ten feet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll I'll give it to you. You guys can probably gather ten feet. Uh, um, Alana would go ahead. probably be ahead anyway. So uh, nineteen. Okay, so uh, if you did not roll a 10 or below, you're fine. Uh, I'm going to roll for Bellany. Die, he bitch. does not get 10 feet. She does not get 10 feet? Okay. <laughs> just just are constantly uh, running I, from her. You know what? I'm going to roll in Tailspire because it's way cooler. Stay away from me, bitch. <laughs> that is an 8. Nice. And it is a constitution saving throw. She's not getting your bonus, uh, according to you. So uh, she does fail. Um, she looks Good. to be lagging a little bit behind, but uh, she's just breathing heavily. That is the ninth hour. The tenth hour approaches, and I need everybody to make another constitution saving throw. Let's go. I love this. Oh, shit. 21. Your boy got a natural, your boy got a natural 20. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> 21. Oh, my God. I rolled a natural nice. 20 as well. <laughs> nice. Six. Yeah. 22. Oh my god. Everybody rolled above a 20 except for fucking Ken, uh, uh, Kinrava. I checks out. This is physical stuff. <laughs> I what? checks out. What the shit? Out. Okay. Oh no, my bad. Sorry. My bad. Five. <laughs> Even better. Does, does that include the plus three? Oh. Six. Well, the plus three is automatic, so it'd be the. Eight. Oh, okay. okay. Then, yeah. That's... But, anyways. You get, you get it, you get it. Yeah, get it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ken. Unfortunately, you take one level of exhaustion. Oh, no joy. Nice. That's always fun. Okay. Tenth hour. Everybody needs uh, to make another. Uh, I'm sorry, that was nine. Eleven. Then eleven hour. Yeah, we're on hour eleven. Please. Roll again. God, we're twenty. Twenty. Fourteen. 
Um, oh shit. Um, that's a that's a one. Oh boy. Oh no. Everybody uh, oh, seems four? to be fine. Oh, except no. for Ray. Uh, Ray's. Uh, I'm sorry. Leoden is also uh, feeling it. Okay, uh, Leoden, you take one level exhaustion. Uh, Ken, you are now on two levels of exhaustion. Uh, also, I would like to say that you guys, uh, uh, it's Ken Raba, uh, even though you rolled a natural one, uh, you would have rolled at disadvantage for this one, um, being that it wasn't a, a saving throw, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't Zero. Do... Okay, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Leoden, you also will be rolling at disadvantage this last, or this next check. Um, so that was our 11. Mm -hmm. Not good. This is now hour 12. Please roll constitution saving throw. Hey, there we go. I will roll disadvantage. Right, disadvantage. Oh, jeez. I, I, well. Hey, I still <laughs> think I'm okay. I think a two for Valony is a failure. I got a 12. It. Okay. Uh, Ten. Ken, what'd you get? With a plus three, thank you, Grimly, I got a 16. Okay, Abel, you got a 12. Right? 15 for me. Yeah, I got 12. And the ones, Abel, you the take ones that one have level been, of exhaustion. The Ooh. ones that have been getting worse, um, I would have been getting close to trying to keep, trying to help them. Okay. Does that include I'm Melanie? Cast... Yes, that includes Melanie. Okay. I'm going to cast a digitation. Just to tr Press the digitation to do what? To try and keep myself warm as we're going <laughs> through this goddamn hike. Doesn't doesn't do anything. Grimly, um, <laughs> the uh, 15, you're fine. Leoden, 11, you 11. said? 11. Okay, you take a second level of exhaustion. Oof. Olanu. 11 with the plus three. Even, there, I just put it up in Discord. There were <laughs> two sevens, my friends. Nice. Okay. Uh, oh. That is 10. Ten. Okay, you take a point of exhaustion as well. Oh. Hour thirteen. She my will friends. lag closer to Grimly at this point. Yep, no problem. Hour Stay thirteen, close. my friends. Hour thirteen. <laughs> Please roll Constitution saving throw again. Uh, disadvantage have if you have at least one level of exhaustion. Fuck. Oh man. Okay, I exhausted my luck with that one. Twenty-eight. Jesus. Jesus! You guys are all Thank keeping you. me warm, getting close and stuff. <laughs> okay, vel <laughs> Villainy rolls a three. Uh, so, Ken, what do you got? Um, Thankfully, with a plus three, that is 17. <laughs> okay. Abel? I got a 13 total. Okay, you take another point of exhaustion. Grimly? Here we go again. 28. 28, you're good. Leoden? Nine. Yeah. Okay, you take another point of exhaustion. Olanu. Oh. 23. Okay, you're fine. That was with disadvantage? Yes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I have a plus six to my um, yeah. constitution saves. It makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Velany fails it for the third time. Um, if you don't know anything about uh, um, exhaustion, there are levels of exhaustion that we are counting. And... Just for those uh, that are watching and for me to kind of go through and kind of define how uh, dangerous this is right now. Uh, exhaustion rolls in levels and like from the first level, you get disadva disadvantage on all ability checks. Um, the second one is your speed is halved. Your third one is that you have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Fourth level is of exhaustion, it means that your hit point maximum is then halved. Your fifth level of exhaustion means that your speed is reduced to zero. And your sixth level of exhaustion is death. That being said, the 14th hour of travel. Please roll another constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Stay close. Fuck. So you wouldn't have had disadvantage on your rolls until the third level of exhaustion. Melanie fails for the fourth time. 
Fifteen. But saving throw is the third. Kindrava. Thankfully, I got another seventeen. Okay. Abel. Wait. Did you say we wouldn't have disadvantage on the first? Nope. You're disadvantaged on the first. Uh, the first time you get uh, exhaustion here during this. Abel. On. Okay. on, uh, on I rolled throws? two eighteens. Oh. It, so it's I probably a special thing for this one. Two eighteens, oh. you said. Yep. Yeah, so I got twenty-three. Holy shit. With this Grim. advantage, yeah. 17. 17, awesome. So all three of you passed so far. Leoden? 11. Okay, you take another point of exhaustion. How exhausted are you, Leoden? I think that's three. Is that three or four? That's, that's four. four. That's four, my friends. Ooh. Okay, Olanu. Uh, 15. 15. Wait, hold on. You actually take a point of exhaustion with 15. Oh, it's getting higher. Oh. Yeah. Yep, it has been the whole time, and I've been rolling worse every single, every All right. single time. 15. Oh. Hour 15. Roll again. Oof. Fuck. Ooh. Velani passes her fucking first test. <laughs> Ken? I got so lucky thanks to a dwarf. I got 19 thanks to him. That's pretty good. Abel? 18. 18 passes, Grimly. 17. 17 passes, Leoden. 6. Ooh. Another level this of exhaustion. Is this how Leoden goes? <laughs> <laughs> He just slowly gets tired and falls Ol asleep. Olanu? <laughs> 13. You also fail, or you also take another point of exhaustion. So, with everybody's exhaustion, I think Leoden is down to zero movement speed. Yes. I think she just collapses. Yeah, I carry like, that's her. Yeah, actually, that's what I was going to do RP-wise, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you guys are moving quickly enough, and then suddenly, like, Leoden, your legs just give out from under you, and your exhaustion takes over. And you face plant into the snow. Yep. Yep. I'll help carry her. You pick her up and she's just shivering. She teeth are clattering. She has resistance to cold, right? It doesn't With matter. No. Cloak? No. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. I do not have cloak. resistance to Olanu cold. Olanu is cloak. taking exhaustion right now, just the same as everybody else. Yep. <clears throat> cool, 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 cool. I'll go back and see if I can help Grimly with her a little bit. All right. Just before the final hour of travel, the elk tribe comes to a stop as the giant group of elk in front of them stop to feed. And they begin to set up camp. They look back at you and Grimly carrying Leiden in his arms and trudging through the snow with Olanu like pushing through and like grimacing due to the fact that she's not used to this kind of shit. Abel and Kin also struggling. And of course, Velany, very badly struggling. You push forward. You all eventually yet again meet up in the same spot. Leoden, it's tiring, but your eyes are open. But like, you are just like freezing cold, like you cannot move. And the elk tribe begins to set up their camp. As you sit there and shiver in the cold and watch as they begin to unpack their daily lives back into the, the tundra in front of them, the symbol on your head slams into your forehead and you fall back into the snow to disappear once again. You all appear in the room to the right where you just were beyond the doorway and the doorway slowly slides open once again. Are we still exhausted? When you appear in the other room, 
You are out of breath. You are freezing cold. You feel like your bones ache. Your muscles are atrophied and frozen solid. But slowly but steadily, your senses return to you. And you are back to what you were before you left. So no exhaustion? Not right now. Thank oh. Interesting. Jesus Oof. Christ. Kinrava's going to go straight close. to Leoden and cast Prestidigitation to start warming her up. Leoden is shivering, like, profusely on the ground, almost to the point of, like, uh, seizure-like. Um, and, oh. yeah, you go over and can warm her up from this. Abel, sorry. Yeah, I was going to do the same thing. As yep. Seeing Kinrava go over there, I'll go over and help also with Prestidigitation. Your, um... Your magic uh, cape that you are wearing, Leoden, um, begins to also help warm your your body. Um, returns you back to a normal temperature before anything even happens to you, magic and or physically. Um, as everybody else is catching their breath, you see like um, Velani is like on one knee and like has both hands on her staff, and is like you know of course struggling to breathe as it is. Are you all right, Miss Harpal? She slowly turns to you. She goes, I don't see how it could have lasted another hour. I don't think any of us could have. I no, I couldn't have lasted another hour. She says, Oh. I'm back to normal. What of you all? To normal. I'm fine. Can, 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 can we not go places where it's cold anymore? I have uh, good <laughs> news. You're still freezing cold. <laughs> That's what we're trying to fix here, aren't we? Yes. Oh, well, I don't know if go. here ever gets warm, but yeah. But at least we can leave after we're done with this. Yeah. I'm going to go every place that's hot. Tell you what, <laughs> tell you what, Leoden. Once we're off this island, you can spend as long as you want in the dome. <laughs> Velen, he takes right. a moment while you guys are talking to use their staff to pick herself up and make her way. She seems to be muttering something to the the orb that is with her as she walks up, um. like walks into the next area. Do I hear what she's muttering? Uh, your passive. Uh, let's see. That's what. That's the only reason I ask. Yeah, yeah, you would have. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, can't you read lips too? Yep. Yes. With a yeah. I totally can. So for yeah, for all for all purposes here, you wouldn't have heard her, but you would have seen her lips moving as she like moved closer to the orb, um, and uh, and she is saying basically, "I won't lose you again, Scant." A professor. Okay. I'm not going to say anything to anybody else about it. Um, does, does the orb have lips for her to read? Yeah, the, <laughs> the orb magic mouths some lips and she can totally read it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I was worried before. I mean, even with a nat 20 and with bless, I could not get past her passive perception. Yeah, with, without the fact that, like, if you're covering your mouth and then you also roll, like, you know, insanely well, then maybe. But other than that. Also, vicinity has a lot to do with it. So even if she rolled really well, still yeah. could be like, there's no way. I mean, the girl can hear a moth fart at the, with her perception. I think we're good. Was Long there anything within in the... that room? Same thing. Gorgeous, okay. beautiful room, but otherwise okay. just normal. Natural okay. stuff. Uh, shall we keep going? We don't have much choice, do we? Mm. We started this. We may as well see it to the end. I'm gonna... I'm not that... Oh, God. Next room. Next room. <sighs> Abel jumps into the next room and begins sliding around until disappearing and losing his mini. <laughs> nope, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you yep, go into yep. you go into the next room and um, you can see the walrus sliding around. Wee! Yeah! 
you guys continue on to the next area? Yes, sir. Yes. The next door. The words isolation above the lintel. Oh, sweet. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is giving great. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. I love this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that was a good reaction. Gives out, guys. What if we... Ah, fuck. I lost her. Let's what if see we hold what hands? I don't think it matters, but maybe... It won't matter. <laughs> Let's see what brand of fucked we are now. <laughs> Are you guys all going in at the same time again? Yeah. Or tie each other together. <laughs> okay. It won't matter. Who's doing what? Kinrava's gonna touch the goddamn door. <laughs> she just <laughs> she strides forward, pissed at what just happened or whatever, and slams her hand against the door, slaps it. Psh! <laughs> and when she does Fuck the second you. she touches it like before it even gets to make a noise as if passing through the door her hand just poof, and she just falls into a cloud of smoke <laughs> and everybody else continues on also passing into a cloud of smoke Woo! this can't be good Okay, so this time... These fucking ragged camps. Yep. Let me adjust the sound again because I keep forgetting to... apply it. There we go. Uh, and then let me throw you guys here. Lead it. Ken. Nice. Grimly. Abel. And... Velony. Okay. When you guys appear, again, with the symbol of Aureal floating above your foreheads, you appear outside of camp until one finally says... Or one of the, the, the tribesmen, of course, um, looks at you. And all the warriors in this, uh, up, uh, in this camp appear to be sharpening weapons. Um, one of them sees you and, like, eyes wide, calls out in a strange tribal language. And suddenly, uh, a figure appears, a very slender uh, female figure, um, being, like, trailed on its side. Uh, of course, the slender figure itself is covered in furs, um, this time with, like, uh, a very like long piece of fur that kind of comes down on either side of her face that ends in two sharp tusks. Um, to her side, a giant, like a medium sized um, giant cat uh, to her side. You see a saber toothed tiger is uh, oh, following shit. next to her. Wicked. And I'm she very excited. Yep. <laughs> she looks over to the group and she says, Oriel has blessed us. She shouts. And she says, the Frost Maiden has sent emissaries to watch our camp while we complete our mission. What is your mission? We are to take what is ours. And she looks over and she says, Come join me around the fire. Sure. <clears throat> Why not? Go follow. Yeah. She leads sure. you to the center of camp. Uh, the rest of everybody, like, just kind of, uh, very solemnly not speaking and not doing anything other than sharpening their weapons very ominously. I love the saber tooth tiger mini. It's a little boar. <laughs> yeah. It's the only thing that, like, tusks. <laughs> Yo! Holy crap! What the fuck? Chances! has tipped $25. Whoa! Oh, wow. Holy shit. Chances. Thank That's a you friend of mine. So Thank you, Chances. Fucking much. Holy shit. Thank you very much for the support. That goes directly towards being able to travel uh, to 
the uh, packs unplugged. That is insane. Thank you fucking so much. Um, <laughs> wow, unbelievable. Um, shout out, shout out. Uh, you know, she shout looks. Out? She looks over at you and, uh, or not you. She looks over at the um, uh, the saber tooth tiger next to her. And uh, the tiger looks very, like, wary of, like, all the newcomers. And she, like, kneels down next to it and starts pat patting its head. And she says, calm yourself, chances. You will get your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and when she does, the, the saber tooth tiger kind of, like, kneels down or, like, you know, gets down on its haunches and, like, sits up straight. Nearly tall, nearly as tall as her. And um, she, she kind of looks over at the group and she wants to, of course, explain herself. And she says, there is a tribe near us. She says, we are going to full force take them on. And, God, and like I said, we will take what is ours. She says, with your help guarding our camp, we know that we can at least leave everything as is before picking up and going. What's the She's, tribe? She looks over and she says, it is the tribe of the elk. Sure, go for it. She says, they have entered our territory and they will know our wrath. Great. And she says, I know I can trust you emissaries. Please watch over our camp and Why fare thee well. We? Go on then. She looks confused at you, Olanu. <laughs> Go on. It's okay. I'm sure we will be perfectly fine with this isolation, she says while looking at Olanu and says, Go on. Go on. Have fun. She kind of just like looks back and forth, like very confused. What's going on? She's nope. like, okay. Th Don't thanks. forget your pack lunches. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about a couple hours later, the, the the tribe is ready to go. They've all gathered at like the outside of the encampment, and leading the the fray is that uh, that um, very skinny but uh, powerful um, female warrior. As she holds up her uh, her sword in her hand, she points out towards the tundra and yells out very loudly and like almost like a war cry and the rest of the tribe answers back in this loud uh, war cry and they begin their move out and is there any way you can give uh, the leader of the elk tribe a heads up <sighs> can I let's see they're all gone, right? When we're having this conversation, <laughs> she's like, what? No. "Why would you do that?" No. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely waited until he said they left. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. Right. <laughs> um. Alana wants to set their camp on fire. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, Leah gonna stop Alanu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time. <laughs> That's a weird turn of events. <laughs> You know, I was gonna go. There's, nah, sadly, no, not a, not today. I didn't prepare that spell. Give me four hours, I might, but. Uh, Veleni oh. is like, warming her hands by the fire, <laughs> just at the campsite. <laughs> well, um, good. Might as well look around. Okay, so you want to like search the camp? Yeah, I'm gonna go into the leader's well. camp tent. <laughs> I'm gonna rob him blind. Yeah, rob him blind. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. What's in there? Uh, you look inside, and inside there are like tons of hunting pelts uh, that basically line the entirety of the room. There are like uh, heads of animals as trophies. Um, the uh, interior is just luxuriously lined with furs. Um, uh, outside of that, you see like a, a chest that it kind of lines the outside or like the foot of the bed that is basically just like a cot. Leodan, come in here with the bag of holding. We've got like a bunch of stuff we need to put in here because fuck that bitch. Is there a lock on the chest? There is not. I'll kick it open. 
you kick it open, and when you when it opens, you see a a series of like um, different furs and stuff like that, just for replacements or um, or possible blankets or or whatever that might be needed during like the different uh, temperature nights. Um, and you dig through it, and you can find uh, what looks to be a strange looking dagger. I'm never good. Don't take. Uh, the also dagger, the dagger itself, uh, I will describe uh, just like the look of it, I guess. Give me a second. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. You toss it to Ken. Yeah. Okay. Detect magic then. Uh, yeah, you detect magic. <clears throat> and As a ritual, though, this was taking up. me ten minutes. Okay. So yeah, uh, ten minutes passes um, as they, they literally just left ten minutes ago. Um, so are we sure we're these types of people? <laughs> Velani is like. I don't know around. why I'm the one that has to say something. <laughs> they praise Auril. These aren't good people. What? They've not done anything to make us think that they aren't good people. They, they have literally said. Auril has sent us to save them. They praise Auril. Auril is an evil goddess who has turned this world into an endless night and endless winter. They are evil. So and with that exact logic, Hinrava here shouldn't be a part of our party. Because even though she technically doesn't honor whatever drow god is hers, because I can't remember the name right now, her entire, almost every other drow in the world does. We Fiend can't just take it off of that. Goddess. We actually don't know that. We just assume that. I think she has, though. She I said don't it. think we should. Just because they're bad people doesn't mean we should be bad people. I'm not. No. You can't put anything in the bag of Holden. You do whatever you want. Okay. Can you cast your magic spell after 10 minutes and after it goes off, the dagger that you hold in your hands glows. <laughs> I spend the next 10 minutes casting Identify. <laughs> you cast Identify on the item. When you cast Identify on the item, You are given uh, this description. This deep blue claw has been fashioned to an ornate silver handle covered in gems worthy of any dragon's hoard. The tip of this claw still draws blood easily with minimal pressure. After attuning to this claw, you have a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magical weapon. On top of that, when you roll an attack, you score a critical on either a 19 or a 20. Nice. On top of that, on an, a successful hit, the Claw of Icing Death allows a surge of freezing energy to attack the enemy, dealing 2d6 cold damage. Any creature Christ. that dies to this damage is magically frozen solid for 1d10 days, during which time they cannot be thawed, armed by fire, animated, or raised from the dead. Okay. Sounds very Kenrava. Yeah. Alongside Jeez. the, uh, alongside the, the dagger, uh, you unroll a, a small, like, scroll that was kind of, like, attached to it. Um, and mm -hmm. on the scroll, it says, In Glioclox Stamilatzelian, though dead for hundreds of years, still manages to impart its magic into even its smallest parts. Carl H. Pond. Huh. Well, this is... The an actual claw from ice in death that 
dragon that that male drow everyone here adores killed. Seems you got something useful. I wouldn't say I have it right now, and if Leoden is not uncomfortable, I am more than happy to place it back where we found it. Waste. I'm just gonna go sit by the fire. Okay. Hours. And Rava's just gonna like. Oh, Sorry. No, don't do you think? Just gonna like sort of look over towards Leoden and just say, for the record, I did say I did get rid of any sort of praise to that goddess. All right. And after an hour of waiting, nothing. The winds, the cold winds kind of push through. By the end of the night, nothing. Are you guys staying awake? What are you guys doing? Are these trees actually here on the like outskirts of the... Uh, they would be bare. Okay. There's no leaves on them. It would just be, uh, you know, broken wood. I'm just going to hang out on, like, the edge of the camp and just keep an eye out. Okay. Are you staying up, then? Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay up. Okay. Olano? Uh, I was just trying to figure out if we should take shifts. Because we don't know how long we're going to be here. That might be a good idea. <clears throat> okay. So, to speed things up, nothing happens during the night. But the first night pushes through. And I need all party members to make a wisdom saving, uh, excuse me, wisdom survival check. Mm. Survival. One of you guys are going to fuck me over. Uh, that's a natural 20, Dan. Ooh, nice, Abel. 18. Nice. 19. Very nice. Leaden. 22. Very nice. Jesus. Guys. I have a 21. Holy tits. All right. You guys fucking nail the first night at least. Uh, and you all wake in the morning. Uh, you know, morning time. The time that you would normally wake up. Uh, and when you do so, you kind of gather your things and look around. There's still no Reged Nomad tribe. Um, but uh, you spend a little bit of time kind of like looking around, and Veleny is nowhere to be found. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. What do you guys the do? The entire camp? <laughs> oh, yeah. You've searched the entire camp. You've spent several hours now looking. She's gone. Uh, can we see any tracks that might look like hers? Uh, you see tracks that look like hers that lead away from the camp. Should we follow her? Where could she go? Uh, I'd say just wait here. If she's still out there, she'll come back. But frankly... I don't know. I'm not sure how these rules work for these tests. Her walking off could have just disqualified her for all we know. Another another full day passes. Oh shit. What are you guys doing during that time? Or are you doing anything special or persistent during that time? <clears throat> um I mean, if we got time, I'm going to start working on some new jewelry for Ken. <laughs> Okay, if you have it um, on your person. I would yeah. suggest to the rest of the group that we take shifts so that we can watch over each other. Yeah. I have a question. Mm. Do we get a long rest from this? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Thank oh. Lordy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. 
That changes everything. I did not expect that. <laughs> Neither did I. Dan will come to regret this. <laughs> Dan's like, fuck. No, it doesn't Why say you I don't. Say yes? It doesn't specify that you don't, so. Oh, great. That means something worse is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you get a full night's rest, but uh, yeah, uh, Valenie is gone. Another day, full a full day passes. Uh, I need everybody to go ahead and roll again for a uh, wisdom survival check, please. <laughs> I rolled another failed. natural 20. Uh, and then Holy I rolled onto a 2. 19. Look, if this is real life, that 2 would have counted, not the 20. <laughs> Are we all camped camp close perfectly. to each other? Or yeah. is anybody well, separated? I would have kept in the center. Uh, no matter what, what's your rolls? Kinrava. I got a dirty 20. Okay, Abel. Do, we, do you want me to reroll it? No, you're good. Okay. Natural 20 for 26. 26. Okay. Grim? Another 19. Lead in? 23. <laughs> Holy fuck. Ooh. Olanu? Uh, 19. Y'all insane with these rolls. Okay. Uh, day two has gone. Uh, third day. Roll again. Three days. God damn. <laughs> For the record, Sorry, Kinrava's weird. since it's been three days now, Kinrava is going to put that dagger on her belt. Like, it's been three days, come on. <laughs> okay. She'll give it back to them when they come back. Sure. Yes. Uh, all right, so third day down. Uh, this is another survival check, please. Um, so, Kin, what'd you get? Remember um, to add a plus that three. Is plus two. That's an 18. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, then... it's a wisdom check. Yep. Wait. What about wisdom a wisdom survival, check? right? It is a wisdom yeah, survival. Wisdom survival. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. like, it is not Never a mind. saving throw. <laughs> so you do not get any pluses from Grimly. I have been That's using cute. the check, though, just so you know. Yeah, no worries. So, Ken, what'd you get? Um, I got an 18. Okay. Uh, Abel? 22. Uh, Grimly? 21. Leaded. Damn. So I've been rolling incorrectly, and they all should have been higher. So please don't freak out when I say a 27. Okay. <laughs> Olanu? God damn. <laughs> uh, 18. That also is a natural 20. Day Sorry. four. <laughs> Roll again, please. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. So, we're going to get to day 30 before. Oh, anything God. Happens. Okay, shit. Just yeah. kidding. This one isn't as, bad, as good. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a 21. Okay. Abel. Um, <laughs> rolls during that march? I got an 11. <laughs> okay. Grimly? Eight. Okay. Lead in. Oh, shit. 26. Alonu. 11. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's gone, but can Rava and Leon. <laughs> you awake in the morning, and can Rava and Leon, you are the only ones left in the camp. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh, no. I guessed it. I guessed it. Oh, now y'all can have that talk. <laughs> <laughs> Three days later. <laughs> You know, this is very awkward after everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> Especially considering she's legitimately not talked to any of you. No, I mean, can Rob is saying one. that to Leah, then? <laughs> oh, I know! Yeah. I'm saying, oh, you mean since I've not talked to you, since you all decided to be terrible people. You, you I kind of expect it from, but you always got a good reason for it. Come on, no let's go problem. see if we can find everyone else. Uh, by the way, anybody who's disappeared, you currently um, have no idea where you are. Uh, you did not walk. <laughs> you did not walk away from the the camper or, or anything like that. You don't. You don't know where you are. You don't know what is so, going on. So we don't find footprints. We just find spaces where they were. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Cool. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Let's see, that was the fourth day. Uh, I need a fifth day roll, please. Oh, God. 
from everybody? Nope. Just or from just the two people in the camp. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, it was only going to go down from there. <laughs> I mean, Kid, mine's still got? lower, but it's still well over 20. <laughs> what mine's got, a dirty 20. A dirty mm. 20. And Leoden. 23. Awesome job, guys. Day six approaches. Roll God. one last time. Oh, God. Roll high. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't expect anything else from you, Leoden, so whatever. I'm what just, just happened just saying, last time? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, that's true. That is true. <laughs> that is a natural 20 for any. Woo. What's that? That's a natural Not 20. twenty for twenty-two. You gotta be Yay. fucking kidding me! I'm Mine's not. Just a so 21. Ken rolled a twenty and a twenty-two. Twenty on day five and a twenty-two on day six. Literally barely saving both days. And Leah of course. <laughs> oh Leodin, my! What God. did you roll? A twenty-three. A twenty-three. So yeah, you made it as well. <laughs> After the sixth day, the tribe returns. Oh and no! <laughs> in tote. Grimly, Abel, Olanu, oh, and Velany are walking back with them. The last 24 hours, 48 hours, how long you've been gone since you've left, completely eliminated from your memory. All you remember right now is walking back with the tribe and you return. I need Abel, Grimly, Olanu. To roll me a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Oh, yeah. Not great. Plus threes. Plus threes? Okay. I imagine wisdom we're walking together. Mm, I'll allow it roll since with you real dice. The, the ones that... Still not great. <laughs> got far. Mm, is it wisdom survival? I'm going to roll my able oh, no, wisdom saving. saving throw. Yeah, wisdom no. saving. Okay. 28. 12. <laughs> A 28. Abel? Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Face change. Uh, oh, and a hydrate. Seven. And a seven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, I take it back. Dude, Don't roll physical dice either, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just Fish. don't roll. And... Yeah. Okay. So, as a uh, <laughs> As a oh uh, Abel, God. Grimly, and Olanu return, uh, I need Olanu and Abel. Uh, I need you guys to go ahead and roll me um, a D100. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> nothing bad ever happens when we have to do this. Yeah, D100s are super nice. <laughs> ah, motherfucker. Sorry, mate. It landed on top of the other dice. That's fine. Uh, if it's, if it's cocked, it's cocked. Only a 17 on a D100. An 81. That's pretty good. Depends. If it's okay, a table, well, it may not be. Both of these, mm. not too terrible, I guess. Olanu, as you return to the camp, <laughs> funny enough, <laughs> Ken Rava's words kind of like weighed heavily on you. Leoden's definitely not so much. And you <laughs> believe even more so that whatever you find, you keep. Okay. You became a clep. <laughs> you became a kleptomaniac. Abel, as you returned, as you are out in the wilderness, you don't know why. But now, there's only one person you can trust. Only one. And only yourself. you can see your special friend that you can trust. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. So, it could be whatever you want. Because this is your, so. your option. Um, but uh, you now are very wary of trusting anybody outside of your special friend. Sweet. Wait, Wait. Just fuck my shit oh, right up. Shit. <laughs> oh, okay. shit. 
You return to the camp, and when you return to the camp, the uh, the leader thanks you all. You see that there is, of course, less of them have returned to the uh, to the camp as it is. Um, but uh, for the most part, many of them do return with cuts, scrapes, bruises, um, many wounds of battle. Um, but they do return, and when they do return, they thank you for watching over their camp. And as soon as uh, they return, grimly, um, you feel. Uh, a strange sensation in your stomach as like as if like um, oh. like it's turning over inside of yourself oh, oh wow. shit um, oh, no. and suddenly the symbols on your forehead spoof, slap into your forehead and you slam into the ground and disappear into the snow well that's, that's not bad. good Okay, and cool. we return you guys over to the island. Right. All right, you return and you are transported into the, the room directly in front of you. The door slowly opens. All is uh, as it was beforehand, except for you have now uh, gained some strange mental um, fix. Some of you have, at least. What happened? No, we're not. What do you mean? You all disappeared. I don't. I don't remember anything. We... First you stole, which is weird for you, and then you disappeared. <sighs> Do I still have the dagger? Uh, yeah. You, you, look, you look down. Did you put it back? I thought you said you picked no. it up after like no. the third day. <laughs> no, oh, she was I thought you to... said you did. She would have put it back, but after see, reading those stats, fuck no, she's keeping it. Okay. <laughs> so third. She put it back the... initially, but then yeah. picked it back up when y'all were the back. third day. So what <laughs> what had literally happened is Kinrava after the third day said that she would go back and grab the thing and put it on her waist. So oh, after okay. the third day, she did that. But if you had left before the third day, then it would still be there. But no, you look down and you do see it. Um, it feels like I lost days. Oh, my stomach. What do you mean your stomach? It's been a while. And I feel sick. Been a while. Been a while. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think it's take, anything. I'm gonna take a couple steps back, just from the whole group. Okay. And I'm just gonna like watch from like 15 feet away. Are you all right, Abel? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Everybody all right, though? Fine. Shall we continue? <sighs> we only got one left. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Valeny leaves the room. You follow. Oh, motherfuck. Hold on. Oh yeah, her. <laughs> uh, okay, so. <laughs> okay. Carry on. You guys going for the final area or the the fourth one at least? Yeah. Okay. This time, when you get to the final doorway that leads into this huge, uh, you know, icy area, um, above the lintel, you see a cracked, like, message, or a cracked word. You don't really get to see, or you don't understand it, like, immediately. Uh, but the words, or the word, excuse me, that you do see is Irvation. 
E R B A T I O N. It looks like the f the first part of the word was uh, destroyed uh -huh. long ago. Hmm. This will be fun. I don't follow the end of the. Okay. Where are you gonna stay, or where are you? I will just climb up onto the first step and stay in the room with the walrus. Oh, okay. So you're on, like to the middle of the room. Yep. Okay. I don't think this is necessarily going to help me any, but he's not cool with them, right? Now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Velanie's already in the room. What's what are you guys all doing? I mean, Sorry. you guys have inspected. You guys have close enough to read it, at least. So. Um, Abel's um, gonna stay stay in this big room too out here. Okay. Just <laughs> like right here, and he's just gonna watch Leoden. Yeah, I, I, I look at Alanu and give her a weird look, like, what's up with those two? And then I'll walk up and hit the door. Okay. So you walk up and, like, slap your gauntlet against the door. And uh, when you hit the door, you disappear into a smoke, uh, as well as everybody in the room. Abel and Leoden, you do not. Oh, shit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Aww. And we return here. Now, the only people that actually went this time are Kin, uh, Iceheart, Grimly, <laughs> and Melanie. Course. Just so you know, I am just sitting on that ice block, playing my mandolin and singing. <laughs> there you go. That's what I, you see. I like. I don't expect you to like go back. I just wanted to let you know what's happening. Yep. I'm just keeping a close eye on her. <laughs> Makes sense. This is interesting. You appear here, and this time. Your surroundings vanish in a flurry of snow and ice, and when your vision clears, you find yourself at the edge of a camp under clear skies. All the fires in the camp are out, and the only sound you hear is the flapping of the tents as the winds hit them. Uh, these fires are supposed to be out. You are, you guys are on the wrong one. Ha ha ha! Let me move you over. <laughs> there we go. Now you're on the right one. Okay. Um, closer examination reveals that dozens of corpses, half buried in snowdrifts. Fuck. It becomes clear that a massacre took place here recently. You hear the squawking of buzzards coming from the middle of the camp and see a half dozen vultures picking at two bodies outside one of the larger tents. What do you guys do? Wrong Start way. rushing. F bow and shoot one of the vultures. <laughs> you want to go and shoot one of the vultures? <laughs> Why not? Okay. <laughs> okay. You, ru you run into the camp. Uh, Veleni reluctantly follows. Uh, Ken, what are you doing? I'll follow them. Sure. <laughs> okay. Charge as you charge in. <laughs> Uh, I guess you just get distance enough to shoot a, an arrow, uh, if that's what you said you were doing. Yeah. Which is... Damn, they're big. 150. They are giant vultures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll rush in 23 and to, to hit. 23 hits. Eight points of damage. Okay, which one are you aiming at here? Uh, just whatever's closer. Uh, you got two that are pretty equidistant from you right now. Uh, the one left or right. on as you're looking at it, left. Okay, cool. You fire at this one, and it takes eight points of damage. You said. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, at that point, I need you guys all to roll for initiative as it takes the arrow like in its side and squawks. <laughs> and immediately the rest of the vultures all turn in your direction. And they start I to all, all survive this. squeal and squeak. And they are very pissed. Everybody, roll for initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Y'all could have used the archer for these flying creatures. Probably. What the hell? Uh, 13. Well. 17. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me get rid of this. Of course, this is the one test that has combat <laughs> right <laughs> when we're two i was of the party, thinking that i was <laughs> thinking that what y'all did made sense roll that's actually made really complete good. sense oh i'm not upset about my decision at all okay so uh we're gonna go down the line real quick um let's get uh abel you are not here kin 17 17 uh brad i'm sorry Thir grimly 13 13, and Olanu. 12. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Perfect. Uh, and then I will roll for felony. That is a 15. Okay, so 17 uh, is not up first as the buzzards all roll an insane uh, initiative. And as soon as Alanu strikes the, the creature. It looks like they are hungry and ready for a fight. And this one moves in to strike you. Uh, and we'll make an attack at you. So the first attack will be... Uh, it's beak attack. Which is uh, 10 to hit. Nope. And then the talons, it has a 13 to hit. Nope. Okay, so both attacks go wide, and you block them pretty easily with your, uh, your, um, what is it called? Uh, my... Glaive. Glaive, there we go. <laughs> yeah. We'll, you, like, we'll spin go. it around, you spin it around, deflecting all the strikes. Um, it, uh, it flies up directly above your head, like it's gonna peck at you. Out of 10 no, feet No, like, of it's, reach? like, right on top of you. Oh, okay. It's just taking up basically your space in, in Grimley's. Nice. And then this one will come to attack and do the same. First one's a fail. The second one also a fail. What the fuck? That was a, a two and a one. Uh, this one just flies directly five feet up. Um, all right, and then allows this one to come flying in over the top, and we'll come down and attack Kinrava. First attack is a 16 to hit. Shield. Shield, and then the second one is going to miss because of the shield. So two strikes go off and batter off of your shield. And it will begin to fly as well obviously, because it came in flying. The <laughs> others will spend their turn trying to get over to you guys. So uh, It will also get stuck in things and fly. And we'll come around back on this one. Okay. Uh, it is now your turn, Ken. You're up. 19. Or, I'm sorry, seven. They're all five feet up in the air, right? Yeah, they're all just, like, right directly next to you. Like, directly next to me, or, like, actually five feet up in the air? Like, hovering, like, inches away from your face. Meaning, your height is about five-something, and they are at that height flying. Okay, I cast Fireball. Okay, like, at I'm, the whole group here? I'm chip. Nah, I can't cast Fireball without catching everyone in it, so... Okay, I, I don't know, you never know, you never know. Um, what do you want to do? Let's see... You know what? Yeah. Um, 
Kinrava's going to cast Summon Aberration. Okay. <laughs> and she's going to summon a Beholder. A Beholder? Beholder. Okay. She's too strong. Let me... Interesting. <laughs> Freaking love your class. It's <laughs> 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 fucking amazing. <laughs> Confirmed that Allie's a wizard next campaign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I don't necessarily have a mini for a beholder, but I got Or if Ice this Heart thing. dies. Where are you summoning it? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm summoning it um, on top of the tent. On top of the tent, it, it is. Hover and fly. And it will fly and hover. Killspire doesn't have a beholder? Uh, it is a licensed uh, creature. Yeah, uh, so they can't really put that in without getting a lawsuit. Gotcha. Makes okay, sense. so. You summon it? Now what? Yep. It's going to move 30 feet. Um, actually, yeah, it's going to go 30 feet higher up. Okay. It is 30 feet up. And Kinrava is going to outright say, shred them. And it's going to fire its black eye beams at it, at the one that attacked me. Okay, at the one that attacked you. So that'll be this one. Yep. So that's now for anybody that's ten. watching, this is not a like full strength, badass, like CR, whatever, um, no, no. beholder. No, 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 no. CR 11, CR 13 when it's in its lair. Yep. Let's see. <laughs> is that true? I don't know. That is 17 to hit. Hits. Okay. And then roll for the second beam because it can fire twice. Oh, yeah. That hits. That's 18 plus numbers. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. So each beam does. Let's see. 1d8 plus 3 plus the spell's level of psychic damage. So that is... 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 is 7, right? Yep. Okay, so d8. Where's my d8? That is 14 points of psychic damage on the first one. 14 points God of psychic damn. damage? Okay. 14 points of psychic damage on the first uh, one. Yep, I roll uh, a 7. Okay, 14. 14, and the next roll is 13 points of psychic damage. Okay, with that, uh, the creature squeaks and squalls uh, right in front of you as it falls from the air and plummets to the ground as it, like, rides on the ground. Hey. Pax coming in here with a gift sub to makeshift music. Aw. Pax. Pax, thank you so much for the support. All right. Mm. The creature uh, falls to the ground and uh, is dead. Okay. That's my end of my turn. Okay. Uh, next up, coming down the line, I think, I believe that is... Where is it at? Uh, Grimly. Um, just so I know, what did Velany roll? Uh, above you. But she... <laughs> God damn it. She gets a natural 20. Never mind. Uh, I was going to say, she totally whips her attack. But yeah, uh, she actually gets a natural 20. Um, and she is just going to cast... Uh... Dagger. <laughs> She's going to cast <laughs> Dagger. Uh, she is going to cast... Detect magic. Uh, chill touch. <laughs> and uh, a spectral hand will emanate out of the creature's chest and then slap on its forehead. Uh, and that will be... Ah, oh, shit, Pax! Oh. Hi, Flux! Welcome! And thank you, Pax, for oh, fucking shut up. sub again. Pax's birthday was yesterday. Yo! Oh, happy, happy birthday! birthday. Oh, happy birthday! 
happy birthday. Okay, so it's 2d8 for damage. Uh, for a total of six. But uh, they, of course, cannot regain any hit points until the next... I'm sorry. And the target can't regain hit points until Valenie's next turn. Uh, so, yeah. Now you can go. My apologies. No six worries. Damage, so. Um, so there's two above me and Alanu. I'm just going to go ahead and... No. She targets this one. Burn. What Arth. the fuck, Arth? Arth. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Not to be fucking second guessed as fucking the, <laughs> one of our most fucking amazing supporters. He comes out here and dips into the five gift subs. Uh, it's a hanky, hand fry, clutch, victory, and fish. Nipples? Chippies? It's fish and chippies. Fish and chippies? <laughs> fish and chippies. Fish, fish nipples. nipples. Never mind. Fish nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all read. Arth. Fish nipples. Arth. Arth, thank you. Arth and Pax, you guys are fucking awesome. Thank you guys so much. What oh, the fuck? The <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> c -c 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 combo breaker. <laughs> Coming in with another five subs. Okay. I can hear Pax laughing from the other room. You fucker. <laughs> <laughs> you fucker, dude. So you I know, am the king. Just so you know, this is me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Red Jade, uh, Pooja Berwaki, Rolfer Revelry, which is awesome. Okay, come on, guys. Ray. Ray, come Ray. on. Ray had to join the battle. <laughs> damn it. Charging battery. God damn it. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay. Let, let's, let's talk about people that are normals here. Uh, Lehman16 getting his gifts up, so that's awesome. Commander Strayan. Uh, Joe Numbers, an old friend of mine, Drowsy Dreams, Pink Fox, which is also a new member uh, of the Nat One family, so thank you very much. Uh, Laska, Res Resin Laska, and Caitlin. Guys, holy shit. Thank Rain, you all so, much, so much. Woo! Holy Woo. shit, I am, I am sweating my ass off now. Uh, <laughs> so, Grimly, go ahead and go. Do your thing. It was your turn. I <laughs> will... Holy shit. Just take two strikes with my axe at the one right above me. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, yeah. this, Guys, that was like an advantage instant. advantage because of where the one's placed? It was like an instant level five uh, hype train. And uh, no, there's no, it's just like right above them. So it's like okay. nothing Fair. kind of taking precedence here. Holy shit. Thank you guys so much. That is a... I'll, I'll feed my kids some extra candy for you guys tonight. <laughs> Uh, attack yep. is 15 to hit. 15 hits. And the second is 16 to hit. So two strikes. Both hit. Yep. Go ahead. 1d8 plus three. First attack does five damage. Okay. Sec second does nine damage. So nice. 13. And bonus action, I will... not do anything and just chill hell yeah <laughs> now i'm all fucking hyped up thank you guys so much fuck <laughs> i'm all into this fucking combat now okay just holding uh, my take two yeah, strikes and i hold my shield above my head like, i was about to say you <laughs> slam into it and you're like being covered by like feathers that are like popping out of it every hit you take and just hold your shield up a lot of you're up okay uh she's going to uh take one hit at the one in between her and grimly okay uh, don't forget to rage. Oh, yeah. Bonus action rage. Bonus action rage. <laughs> yeah. Is Guys. 12 hits? What the fuck? Yes, 12 actually does it. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're just birds. Nice. They're big ass fucking birds. <laughs> uh, just birds. Just birds. Just birds. Uh, that is. 17 points of damage? 17 points of fucking damage. Yeah, to right. that one. Uh, to that one. Yeah, okay, so that one fucking literally gets bisected in the air. Feathers everywhere. So, yeah, like, <laughs> you take your fucking glaive, spin it around a couple times, and then, like, come down on it and literally chop one of its wings off as it slams into the tent next to you and then, like, struggles on the ground for a second. You take the glaive and Ooh. stab it into it and finish it. Sick. And then for the other one, 
Natural 20. Yeah, go for oh. it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't I do this before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and then 2d10. Oh, motherfucker. I keep landing him on the other side. Uh, Shout out uh, to fucking Chances, Pax, Arth, and our lovely Super Ray. Our lovely, lovely points Super of Ray. Damage to our that lovely, one. lovely Super Ray. How much? 15? Uh, 13. 13. 13 points of damage. And that is... Yeah, okay. That'll do it. This one also fucking explodes into feathers and just raw fucking... What? Vulture meat. The other two uh, vultures, they get scared off by what's going on and start to fly away. As it is their I'll, turn now. That one was within five feet of me, right? One of them was. That means I get to make a spell out of it. You do. Walk past ever. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let him go. I'm gonna cast at second level Zolothal's Arcane Ray. And you know what? Since this is like probably the last thing we can kill before we have to end the session, um. I'm going to make all three rays different types of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. A rainbow of damage uh, emanates from your hand and without rolling, whoosh, 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 goes out and slams into the creature as it flies away, causing an explosion of feathers. <laughs> 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 it explodes and the other one ah, flies away quickly. All right. As you guys uh, finish off these creatures, from the center of uh, the um, the camp, you can hear the sounds of what, what kind of sounds like whimpering. Oh. <laughs> and Rava's going to go over to that. And cast Fireball. <laughs> no! <laughs> and Rava walks over here, casts Fireball in the center of camp. Uh, Velany will follow. No. Also, yeah. fucking guys, thank you so much for the fucking hype train and the donations. All right. What are you doing? You can hear the, the sound, the whimpering sounds come from the inside of uh, this tent in front of you. Do we recognize this camp? No. Okay. Can Rava will go in and see if she can find what's making that noise. Perception check, I guess. I mean, do you want to go in or do you want to, like, listen or, or whatever from the outside? Just go straight in. Okay, I mean, yeah. She's still got the beholder floating up above the camp as well, so. You open the flap uh, to the tent, and um, inside the tent, it looks to be a small child who is currently holding uh, her knees. And kind of like rocking back and forth. The child looks to be dressed in just a poncho and some thin pants, no shoes. Charging Just rocking battery. back and forth. Leodin would have loved this. She looks up at you. Are you here to kill me? No. No, we're not. And Kinrava will, like, walk in and sort of kneel down. And it's it's strange. Like, she actually takes a tender tone to her voice and see very maternal-wise is the best way to say it and say, Could you please tell me your name? She looks up with, like, tear-soaked face. It looks like she's been crying for a while. And she looks at you and she says, Erox. Erox. Vokotath. I'm going to assume that this was your camp as well. Tribe of the wolf. 
they came and destroyed everything. King Rother is going to do something that she's actually going to reach out gently and then just give them a hug. She falls into your hug and just like starts bawling, like full on bawling. And she, you can hear her like softly, like saying in your ear as she cries, Oh, oh dad, everybody. I was motioning for like the other two to like come in. Like for <laughs> Alanu moves forward um, and asks, who? came and killed everyone. Isar! Isar! The leader of the wolf tribe. Treachery. What tribe is this? We are also part of a smaller group of the wolf. Why would they attack? They were fighting for dominance. Infighting. <laughs> Suddenly, as you guys are talking from a distance, you hear Ooh. I know you're still out there, girl. Come out. Come out and play. I like turn that. towards. She Alano like she immediately like grips onto camp. Kin. Yeah, I'll turn towards the voice and just say, "Alanu." Yeah, and I'll walk towards the voice. Yeah, I was going to just summon um, Asha Benapal out. Mm -hmm to float up above the camp as well. So a little black shadow dragon thing is going to just float up above the camp as well so she can see through its eyes while she's essentially just hugging and in this kid, you know? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much as uh, you go to cast Ash, or you go to cast Asher Benipal and, you know, of course she appears um, and floats out the front. And as soon as she floats out the front, Alanu, as you're looking around, you see someone that is like, snooping around one of the tents next to you is like kind of like waist deep inside of one of the tents like digging through and like throwing things uh and with her glaive out she's gonna say why don't you come play with this girl <laughs> and charge towards him he like gets up and like takes the huge axe that he has next to him and like starts charging you as well okay why don't you and him go ahead and just roll contested initiative here we can just get through this. 16? 16. You go first. Okay. Uh, I rage! Bonus action! Yep. <laughs> uh, and I take two attacks! Go for it. Uh, stop going to fuck me over. Hopefully these two. Uh, reckless. Ooh, okay. Ooh. I'll fight you. 21 to hit. 21 to hit? Yeah, that hits. Yep. Okay, and then... D10, D10s, I don't think they do. <laughs> uh, 17 damage. Okay, on the first. Second attack, yep. Okay. Again, reckless. Again, a 21. Hits. 11 damage. Okay, so how much is that total? It's like... 25? 28? 28? Yeah, 28. Okay. He takes a swing with his axe. Uh, it's a 14 to hit. No, I'm sorry. That's a nope. 16 to hit. Nope. And a natural 20. That unfortunately does. Okay. So I this will use... It's going to be so two-handed. I have not used this entire time. Um, yep. I will use Stone's Endurance to reduce the damage. Nice! By a d12. Oh. Okay, roll your d12. 
Nice. By nine. Okay, so you take half damage and then reduce the damage by nine, making yeah, it I about the, that. making the crit that he just had like literally go down to zero. So <laughs> the crit that he had with Hell the half yes. with the half damage and the reduced damage down to zero, meaning that he takes his axe and fucking comes full force with like this fucking snarling grin. You see, like he's covered in wolf pelts and he has like you know like. Uh, paint that kind of drips down his face almost like wolf scratches kind of and he like swings the double handed axe at you like full fucking force and Olanu you literally just fucking stick your arm straight out in front of you and catch it by the hilt or by you know like by the the, the fucking the pole yeah. of the, the axe and catch it and stop it and his eyes just go wide that's fucking awesome ready to meet your maker uh, how would you like to do this, Olanu? I'm just gonna rip the axe out of his hand and <gasps> use it to chop his head off. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, he's, damn. He like, he's still kind of like holding onto it, so he kind of falls into the side. He falls into the tent and kind of like makes the tent like fall onto him. He's like, <gasps> as he's struggling to get up, you can see the tent is like covering him. And finally he... <sighs> and he looks up, and just as he looks up, the swing of the axe is already in motion, and he's like, nah! and the axe whoosh, just lops his fucking head off. Damn. I bring the child the axe. He'll bother you no longer. <laughs> the child just looks down at the axe, like doesn't know really what to do with it. Um, but she is just like terrified and in tears. Um, but uh, she looks at you and she says, Thank you. And then she kind of looks up into the sky and says, That noise. Do you hear it? Do we hear something? You don't hear anything. Do we hear it? And she stands no. up. Wipes the tears from her face and exits the tent, kind of like pushing past you all. She exits the tent, trying to push <laughs> past you all. <laughs> You're stuck! You're stuck! Oh no. Okay, wait. She's through the floor. She exits the fucking. She's outside the tent. Make her fly. She's outside the okay. tent. Yeah, no, I, I can't even make her fly. She hits the roof. Oh, wow. Um, so she's outside the tent. <laughs> I was able to drag you guys in for some reason. Anyways, she's outside the tent. And as you guys kind of watch, <laughs> emerging from the dead body of the man you just slaughtered, a blue wolf, spirit of a wolf, begins to slowly walk up to the creature. Or, I'm sorry, so slowly walk up to the, the little girl. And the little girl kind of, like, drops to her knees. And uh, the wolf stoically, like, walks up to her slowly. Howls into the air. And the little girl kind of just holds her arms down at her side. And the wolf walks into her body. Oh, damn. The girl slowly rises up from where she was. And she looks over at Olanu and the rest of the party that was actually there and just says, thank you. And at that point, the frost, the, the little uh, symbol on your forehead slams into your head and you fall into the snow, disappearing into a white cloud. And before even returning to where you guys were originally, that's where we'll end today's session. Let's Woo! go. Awesome. All right. Easy. So, very badass kill there. Also, inadvertent spiritual moment for Alanu. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, amazing. Amazing. Good job, everybody. Uh, I wanted to say a special thank you to everybody that uh, came out here and supported the fucking stream like complete and total badasses. Uh, 
Especially Chance, who just dropped in here and dropped 25 bucks just to be like the badass that they are. And then Pax throwing down like an insane amount. Arth coming back for the fight. And then, of course, Ray. You know what the irony of that is? What's that? Chance is a really good friend of mine. And um, for D&D, &D, he always role plays kobolds and rat folk. And you named a giant cat after him. So, <laughs> yes, yes. Do note, do note that if you donate to the stream, I will try to incorporate you at some point into it. Um, guys, thank you so fucking hey, much Dan, for joining I'm us. I'm already today. incorporated. You don't need to incorporate me. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> a small there. creature named Ray. <laughs> <I'm broken. laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. You guys are so fucking awesome. Happy Halloween to everybody. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Join us for the next episode next week and everything like that. Keep an eye out for Running Fae Wild coming in the near future. You guys are amazing. Keep being your best selves. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>